I'm Mary Howard, and this is the Shuttle Pod Show. Brian, because I'm not yeah, really okay. quite sure. Uh, I know yeah. what the fans That's... are asking. Oh, they're they're asking you to say, uh, can you please unkill Trip? Ah! I, think, mm. I guess that's my guess about what's really being Mary, no, can you unkill Trip? <laughs> you don't have that power. No. Let me ask it for you. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> dead, 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 dead. <laughs> everyone, welcome to another episode of Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have very special guest, Mary Howard. We'll be answering your fan questions, doing some Star Trek trivia, finding ourselves on Connor's remote island, and much more. As always, our Patreon members get a full extended version of this episode. I'm Erica LaRose, but before we move on, we have a special message from Andy Robinson. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. Oh, yeah. thanks, yeah. thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and now for your hosts, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. It's nice to, to see, see you all nice on the you. on the picket lines a, a few days oh, ago. That yeah, was really that. intense, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. That was, it was really impressive to see on Star Trek Day all the fans that How many know, people were there? Took was part. Insane. Yeah. I think there it, must have been at least five or six hundred people there. Yeah. And, it was, uh, it was big impressive. shout out to John Billingsley. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Hurd, Jonathan Del Arco, and uh, Natalia Castellanos. They really put together a, a really, you know, it was very moving, wasn't it? It really was, yeah. It was a mixed bag because none of us, I mean, we hadn't all been outside Paramount for 20 years. No, I, I do it a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm often I just, just walking back. There. Hey, you guys need anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing going on. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'll meet you on the street. Corner. Exactly. Come across the street. <laughs> well, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gents, um, Trex and Trekkers, welcome back to the Shuttle Pod Show. I'm Dominic Keating, your co host. We are thrilled to have a lady in the chair this week who, frankly, was the heartbeat of our show, Enterprise, and in fact, all the legacy shows in the Berman era. Um, much like Florence Nightingale, she would wander the halls of the Cooper building, lamp in hand, uh, and the sets tending to the sick. And by that, I mean the writers <laughs> and the actors. <laughs> she would, uh, she was as tough as she was loving and compassionate. And I can tell you that from personal experience. Um, she would make sure that that train left the station on budget, on time each week, uh, she really was the godmother of, uh, of all things Trek. Uh, since leaving the gates of Paramount uh, as a supervising producer, I mean, she literally has gone stratospheric. She now works with the biggest names in the business, uh, Reese Witherspoon's company, Shondaland, uh, the Bruckheimer company. Um, she really is one of the most hardworking, tireless uh, people in the business. She is the indefatigable most wonderful and lovely Mary D. Howard. Yay! Woo -hoo. Thank you. Thank you wow. for being here. Thank you. Well done. Nice. 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 <laughs> that's our, that's our show for today. <laughs> <laughs> One take. <laughs> yeah. It's been a journey. <laughs> yeah. It's been a journey, and the journey continues. So that's the burning right. question that I have been thinking about all week. What does the D stand for? Dawn, D-A-W-N. Is that Dawn? And oh, the yeah. reason I had to put it in there is because there is another Mary Howard. So is it Mary spelled the same? M -E -R -Y, no. or she's another she's M -E -R -R -I. another M E R R I. How unbelievable! And she does she did commercials and public service announcements, and she lives in New York. And literally, we were getting each other's mail, and um, our car services were getting you know oh my God. like mixed up. And I mean, like crazy. Like I would get her bills for the car service, like when you know, like if we had to travel. And oh, so I'm like, wow. I have to add the D there. When did you? Wow. Well, <laughs> When did you? When did I add it? It was probably right after um, when I went into the scandal, into Shondaland is when oh. it started to happen. Oh, so the, yeah. so you weren't Mary D on our in our era. Um, I don't you know what? I no? I, I, I could have been. You might have I don't been. know. I might have but if, if you were first, don't you get it? <laughs> but you get don't you not have to have the D? The D's lovely, by the way. I, I you know what? It's it's kind of become me. So, <laughs> yeah, and but it's really weird because people do so they don't say Mary or they just say they call me. It's one word, Mary Howard. I'm right. constantly I'm Mary Howard. I'm like it's Mary and it's Howard. Right. Yeah. But I'm Mary Howard. So no matter. Oh yeah, my God. So. 
It's lovely yeah. to see you, love. It's been 20 and years. Yeah, it's been a while. It's you so haven't changed the day, by the so way. Either of you guys yeah. who said, you know, so That's it's really it. just thrilling with those. Thank you. Thank likewise, you. likewise. So, um, so, I mean, what did I want to start with? Uh, so you were born. <laughs> so you were born. No, I tell you what I really want to know is, at what point did you know that we were cancelled? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> wow. You're going to light, the house. You're gonna light the house on fire yeah. immediately, are you? Probably on... Probably a day before we told you guys. Mm. It was it really? I think you, it's like it's usually that fast because what what we learn is obviously things travel very quickly, and so and we might have even heard and might even end up going down to stage. I mean, what have been? I, I don't re- I don't remember exactly the time period, but it was very quick. Yeah, so, yeah. But I remember taking that phone call from Rick. I was just coming out of uh, Hollywood Y, crossing the car park to go to my car, and he went. Are you sitting down? <laughs> That's when you get nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I looked around so, and went, uh, I guess. Do I need around. to be? Yeah. 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 Uh, that was a yeah. very sad day. Um, we, God knows we all know we had many more years left in us. And uh, God bless Manny Kofi. Uh, I know. Uh, just, we lost him a few months ago. I know. Mm-hmm. It's, been, it's been some stuff. It's been some time. Um, and um, ha- so you... You weren't born in LA. You were born in New York, weren't you? Born in New York. And right you came here as a young, young girl. Came here when we were, when I was five. five so my years parents old. moved me. Moved. I had, I have two brothers, and my parents moved when I was five because my mom's family lived here, and um, my mom wanted to be close to her brother, and um, so we moved. Actually, we moved, and then we moved back to New York, and then we moved back out to LA. So whereabouts in um, LA did you uh, sort of grow? I up? always grew up in West LA. Right. So right. yeah, that's why. So. Um, yeah, I grew up uh, basically in the uh, um, Pico Robertson area when we right. came here and then moved into the Mar Vista area and um, really stayed. Then my parents uh, bought a house in Mar- in, in like the, what's called the West Hill area, which is right next to Mar Vista. And then right. we- It's a nice um, part of town, Mar Vista. It in, really is. I, you know, it's always want to stay. It's a little I've, secret place, isn't little it? A little secret place, yeah. you know, and you always have like, you know, the weather's cooler and, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was just great. And um, There's a and, good break there too. Yeah. So, oh, a surfing break, yeah. That's, oh, so I don't know yeah. about that. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's a break? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, like, I know, I know. One thing I don't like is, like, you know, like, sand and water. I like to be wet and so I'd be at the pool. It's okay. You like to be near it. I li- yeah, I like to be, I don't like to be. You had it, absolutely so. no intention of getting into the film business whatsoever, did you? I, I understand had- you wanted to be a... Dental hygienist? I know. How crazy is that considering I'm a germaphobe? I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like, <laughs> um, I think it was during high school before we went to college that my best friend's father was um, a dentist. That's and funny. the two of us decided that we were going to go ahead and um, go to college and then go to dental hygiene school because <clears throat> then we can choose what we want to do. Like we could choose our hours and we could have a life and um, and anyway, and then you then, went into the film and business. And then I went into the film business. And <laughs> you had a cousin, didn't you? So that yeah, had a, so my a, a, cousin, some sort of uh, production company. My cousin Carl Borak um, had a uh, uh, had a, fil- a production uh, company that did public service announcements and corporate films, and right. um, it was in Westwood. And when I was in high school, he asked me if I would come and work for him. And at that time, high school allowed you to do work study, like go to school in the morning and then do work study in the afternoon. Mm. So I worked from like one to five for him in the afternoon, and then I went on to college. And I was at UCSB. And in my first year of college, my cousin called me and said, We're doing a film at Universal called The Big Fix. That's right. And it was Richard Drives' company. And wasn't Richard, it? Right. right. And Richard and Carl went to school together and they've been they they're very dear friends. So he said, We think about leaving school for a year and coming to work with us. And I said, Well, I'll test my parents. You know, it's like leaving school. It's a big deal. Right. And I'm like, what a great opportunity. I'm like, 20 years old and right. you know so um i that's what i did so i left i ended up doing the film which we did here and it was great it was uh, jeremy kagan directed it and it was um f murray abraham and susan nonspot yeah. and bonnie bedelia i mean it was a it's wonderful it was a good film yeah. good cast and um then i decided i i don't want to work in people's mouths anymore so <laughs> I, <laughs> so i so i often I, said in words, words to live by so, so I, I, I said to my parents i you know what do you so I, I, I ended up going back to Northridge and doing school at night and then working for my cousin's company and then got an opportunity to work with a Paramount. He was then going to be doing a TV pilot called Key Tortuga. And um, I, I Catchy. went— 
Yeah, it didn't so, go anywhere though. Um, it didn't go anywhere, yeah. but um, anyway, I met the people at Paramount, that's and right. um, that's what sort of. So they asked me if I would come work for them, and um, at the same time, craziness happened when Carl's company, um, the Directors Guild, opened. Um, they had an open period that if you worked for 90 days um, as either a production manager, first AD, second AD, you could apply and get into the into the DGA. Mm. So everybody in the company, because that's what we did, we all had our roles. Um, my friend Jim Dyer said, you know, we should apply to this. At that time, I was like, you know, I wasn't even 21. I had no idea what that meant for my life. <laughs> right. And well. um, I did it. And we applied. And then literally three months later, I, I said, you know, guys, we haven't heard anything. Let's call them. So literally called, and the woman said to me, like, are you psychic? Like, they're looking at your application right now. Call me back in three hours. So three hours later, we called back, and I got accepted into the DGA. Wow. So what So what that meant for me is that it was great because I was in DGA, but I didn't know anybody to hire me. And so right. um, when I worked with Carl um, on the um, – I worked as a production assistant, came in like their assistants on the pilot, and then um, – uh, Marvin Miller and Bob Rosenbaum were the head of production at Paramount at the time. And they said, will you come and leave Carl and come work for us? And so that's what happened. And that's how my career started. Wow. And But I started because I didn't know anybody um, as an assistant director. I worked as a production coordinator. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, on a couple shows there. And then um, Marvin you were called happy me. Happy days. And Mar so Marvin called me and said, yeah. um, I want you to um, interview for Happy Days. It was the 11th season, their last wow. fin final season. Uh, as the shark? AD. Jumping the shark? Jumping the shark. So, <laughs> oh, cool, so I interviewed and um, I, I got the job. Um, and it was reluctant. The woman who was actually really interesting it was the first AD who was a female, which is very, you know, in those, I mean, it's a long time ago mm -hmm. and very few females in the so um, she didn't want to hire me, and she was reluctant to the fact that the you know big wigs were set telling her who to hire. And but anyway, got the job, and um, at the end of it, it, it turned out it was a very successful um, season, and that's how it started for me. So I started second ading then, and then my career just blossomed from went from that to you did first MacGyver, ADing. Mork and Mindy, right? So I did so Mork and Mindy. Um, I did uh, when when our show was down because when you did sitcoms, you had it like you work like three weeks and you had a week down, right? right? And so during those down weeks, they would ask me to come and work as an um, additional second or I would take over as a second if the other um, uh, other second was going on vacation right. or what have you. So I had that opportunity. I did like Johnny and Chachi. I did Mark and Mindy. And Mark and Mindy was wonderful because at you that got time, some Robin Williams, Robin Williams oh. and Jonathan Winters literally oh. together. Yeah. I've worked so, with Jonathan. God bless. Amazing. What a man. And I mean, so God bless him. So we would do the show, and then they would have audience time. And um, during the audience time, like literally, so you'd have the two of them standing together and and telling, I mean, like literally doing routines. And then the producers, you know, like me, looking in the back going, okay, like you've got to get back to work. Yeah. And they would not go Quit back to work. About they, really? <laughs> they literally were just screwing around and having the best time. So, oh, my yeah. God. Wow. So, yeah, so that took me on to, um, you know, so as a second, so then I got on to MacGyver um, from there. All right. Uh, the hours, I mean, sitcom hours, I think, are different than uh, hour-long shows. So it was a it's the best job in town. It honey. was. It, mm. it, going back now, <laughs> if I had that job, it would be the best job in town. For me, yeah. as a young woman, um, it was, I mean, I had three weeks on and then one week off. And, you know, the first day you go in and you read the script. And the second day, you would, the second and third day, you go in and you do um, rehearsals. Block and it a bit. The mm. fourth day yeah. was camera blocking and the fifth day was shooting. Mm. And so I just, it. It was the same routine every week, and I just wanted to try something that and try my hand in something that gave me more, more opportunities to um, be more creative. Mm. So that's when I moved into dramas. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. And, and then you, so you, you work your way up, and you become a first AD. So I worked. Yeah, I did. I did shows. I did a um, couple of worked as a first AD. Brothers, you did. Brothers. Know, yeah. Wow, you're going back in time. Yes. Um, uh, brothers, we both read is, this. I was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, it's amazing. Please, like, you know, yeah. my resume just remind yeah. me what I did. I'm the one that remembers so, it. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> so I, I did. So, He's here for the look. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I did brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good. So. And it was actually on MacGyver that I made the. 
transition from second AD to first AD. Did you have aspirations to direct, you know, become a director? Never, never did, no. Never, never. You always thought that this was a, a segue to get to production and to get producing. To the building. Yeah, yeah to producing. I loved, I mean, I loved putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And um, so I always, and I was never, believe it or not, I was shy. I was like, I mean, it was like up until just really just a few years ago, I didn't like to do public speaking. Oh, mm. right. yeah. I, I so, read that about when the, when you were doing your skybox uh, photographs for the uh, the trading cards. You actually had to have someone on the other side of the camera I, just talking to you. I did. Really? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and she, so, she couldn't even be photographed. And I don't even yeah. know, like, what, I don't know what made the change. But, yeah, so anyway, so for, it took me a long time. Valium years. helps. So, <laughs> 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 it does, but I don't do it, so it's okay. It's always worked for me. <laughs> nice. Will you describe just a little bit for our audience what exactly, like, a first and a second does and um, Thank an you, AD? Thank <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, they boss axes around. <laughs> so the, the first AD is responsible for taking the script, breaking it down, putting it into a schedule, working with the production manager and the producer to, to get the schedule, working with the director um, and then the writers. And, um, and then taking uh, the schedule, taking whatever we've done with the schedule, all the prep for every single department. So the first AD meets with every department with the director um, uh, to go ahead and talk about like what's needed, whether what the props are needed, what we need for, um, uh, you know, for, for background. Um, we go scene by scene with the first AD and they just basically, they drive it for what, what every department, what, what is needed in every single department in mm. order to bring that to stage. And then finally have all that stuff on stage. The second AD is the one who actually works um, behind the scenes of the first AD so that they're going ahead and whatever, the helping coordinate all the efforts, being the person who's responsible for dealing with all of like every every single day every department and what their needs are in the department taking that putting it onto the call sheet and then getting things so they sieve through what's necessary as it were so that no one yeah yeah. so so literally it's like in everybody's double checking everybody else including myself the production manager production supervisor Mm. first ad and second ad we're constant we're in constant conversation every single day looking at the call sheet you know seeing where we are what needs to like what we need to get who needs to be called Called, you know, for tomorrow, do we need the dog for tomorrow? Do we need, you know, what do we need, you know, to bring the crane, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, um, so it's, uh, they're, they're, it's, they're as they're the first AD, I would say is like really like the captain of the ship, you right. know, and, mm. um, uh, and it's driving really shows, everything, driving everything forward. And then my job is to be the person behind that person, you know, helping make and implement them, make that happen. Who determines like whether or not say you need a crane, uh, David Livingston, I think <laughs> told this story or someone told him about him, you know, cause he went from producing, was he line producer for? So he you was, ended up taking his job, really, didn't you? He, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, Tell David, how it is. David aspired to. He really wanted to direct. Yeah. Like, that was what he wanted to do. And so, um, when I was production manager and David was line producer, you know, David sat in his office and looked at dailies a lot. And um, and because he was obviously seeing what the other directors were doing, mm-hmm. while I was working with Brad, and then we were doing, you know, so we were um, we were actually doing the physical work on, you know, hands hands on, uh, just on board. So. I just thought it was funny because, uh, you know, I guess he was notorious mm-hmm. for saying like, you know, you can't have a crane. <sighs> You can't have the crane. And then when he went on to direct, oh, he wanted everything. He, he wanted everything. <laughs> he, he like forgot about any of the producing right. part. Well, he, knew, and he, he was, was sneaky like, too because he oh, knew all. He was so sneaky. <laughs> he, he, knew, yes. he knew all the plot. David, to this day, I'll still tell you that to your face. Ron Beemore told me a lovely story. Oh, uh, <laughs> apparently, they all got hats made up, didn't they? And you actually nixed it. No, comma, David. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, it was, really on, it, it was really, him. <laughs> it was very interesting, like how he did go. He was very sneaky and went around and uh-huh. um, like, truly, it's like everybody's like, why do you and nobody else? It's like, it's not okay. Like you have to set the example. Like you are the leader and you're not leading right now. Right, right. So, yeah. So there was many conversations on many different days <laughs> and many different times. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure being on set oh, watching man. him do take 34. Uh, yeah. Well, the, besides, the actor is going crazy you know it's yeah. like and it's like and marvin right and you you have it like yeah. you had it on take one yeah, yeah just yeah. do two extras backup takes and just let's move put it on. this way right. he's lucky he so. went home with two legs let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, uh, when so you, when do you walk times? into no, star trek sorry go ahead, go ahead. 
Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> um, when you first started working in the film business, did any of the other departments interest you or were you just um, kind of going with the flow into production or? I No, I really loved, um, I loved being a second AD. I loved being a first AD. I loved being a production manager. And it was all about coordinating efforts and putting it all together, you know, taking all the pieces of the puzzle and like putting it, you know, and so that everything fit properly. So, and even to this day, I have to say, um, interesting enough, when I started, like what we call the board, which is actually the production board, you know, mm. that that shows the, the, the whole entire schedule. Everything was done in strips, and you put it into yeah, like this yeah. blackboard right. with the those. different color strips yeah. that were. Um, so right. yeah. <clears throat> it was, you know, day exterior, night exterior, on stage, and I love that. So today, when you have the computer and you don't have that blackboard, yeah, yeah. I literally, in fact, in my Did office right now, lost? no, I take this, I take that, I take those, I take it? those that board that they that the ad's give me and i strip it out so really so now i'm in a situation where you still have a landline so i don't have a landline. <laughs> i do have a landline at home i do i do and i but i, I do I, so I does do. he i have two different husband has a number and i have my number so um but yes i do so yeah. um but we don't really use it the only thing we get is like robo calls on it so my husband's right. like we got to get rid of it and i'm like never <laughs> right the, the wonderful the wonderful part about those jobs uh, that you had are those are the jobs that are responsible for helping all of the other people do their jobs Jobs. Right. You're the you're the you're the glue that holds all the other departments together. Mm. So you get to interact with literally everybody in those jobs. That's I love those jobs. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's just uh, because like truly, if you're and if you're a person who like you know will go, we'll make the rounds every single day to every department, you know, so that they can like see our face, talk to us about you know issues that are at hand, right. things that are coming up. Um, I mean, the most important thing in my job, and actually the first AD and the second AD's job is communication. Mm-hmm. And um, and if you don't, and it's like the first thing I always say is like you know we are like you know. We, we are the people who literally, you know, we just found, we give all the information to everybody and there are no secrets. There are some secrets sometimes, but, <laughs> so, but, sometimes. but, so, but, um, but like we're the ones who like literally, so this, you know, we're thinking of this, we're thinking of that. Tell me what you think. So mm-hmm. that when we're trying to make, you know, decisions, we have the proper information and all the information so that we're making smart decisions. Mm-hmm. We had some lovely, uh, Jerry Fleck was such a great first, wasn't he? God bless you, Jerry. And, uh, Mike Merritt was fantastic as a second. Mike Merritt, and, yeah. Uh, we really, it was a very happy set. Our, our, our time there was really. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it comes from the likes of you, darling, that, uh, that, that sets that tone. And, uh, yeah, top down. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's been an interesting for me um, as a learning experience. And I credit my parents, you know, so much to the fact that um, – they were, they're just such gentle human people. You know, my dad was such a people person and he loved having people around him and everybody was like his, was his family. His mm-hmm. friends were his family. And so that's how, so I was raised. And so as I went into the work environment, you know, it's like every, I just like, I, I weeded out, I, I realized that there's certain things that you take with you and there's certain things that you leave behind. And I had some, I had some, you know, it was tough for me when I started as a young as woman. A woman. I was and I was like yeah. that only woman who was, you know, in, in the room much... and um, in that van and dealing yeah. with, I mean, I have stories of, you know, like just um, people like saying, you know, hey, little girl. And Oof. I would then go ahead and in order to to <laughs> counter that, I would then take um, uh, a name tag and I love hello my name is Mary so every time so that person Mm. would say like hey little girl and I'm like no my name is Mary were you talking to me and so and I and it was very and it was interesting and I think that came from my mom's from growing up and my mom in the workforce you know until she was like 70 and she was you know she was she was firm and she was convicted on making sure that she was you know that she leaned in and that I was going to do the same thing Mm -hmm. so it was great it was really so I was taught at a really young age and it and 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 how do you balance that you know mm. in the male female and yeah. get people to respect you yeah. and get people to work with you and mm. for you so um it was like a, it was a master class that I sort of taught myself so the very you know? boring conundrum that isn't it that you know a tough lady gets called a mm. bitch right and, well know. that was it so how do you be yeah. how do you be tough how to be firm yeah. and sweet at the same time yeah. you know what I mean to be able to get your point across so it's in and you know 
know, I mean, I got apple boxes thrown at me by some directors. Oh, so, oh no, I, I mean, I can tell oh, my story. Name you know, names. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, he's no longer alive. So, um, <laughs> God rest <laughs> so it. Star Trek. So, uh, he's or, a one-legged you know, director now. So, but it's, but it's, you know, so uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, interesting. When did you find, or did you find, the the, the numbers of females coming up? Was, was it part of the DGA program that helped facilitate that? Because um, on our show, a lot of the trainers, the trainees Who were, were women. Who was the first AD, the Asian AD. Arlene Fukai. Oh, she was oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah uh, she was great. And really? so she came up. So, And I think for me, what I learned, and I think was actually working, um, is that the balance was really important. And also, working on Trek, how can you, like, when you think about, you know, it's for all humankind, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, we were, you know, the, we. it didn't matter the color of your skin, or it didn't matter, like, what you were, like, you were hired, you know what I mean? So if you looked at, like, you know, if you looked at the cast and you looked at the, you know, um, everybody in the cast, we, we, there was diversity then, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And how Gene set it up. Mm-hmm. And so it was interesting. And I actually was just thinking about this, how I went from Star Trek for all those years. And then I went into, um, like Shondaland, right. And so very similar into the Hello Sunshine and into all those worlds where everybody strong is, men. you know, strong women, mm-hmm. but also that everybody was valued, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that it wasn't because, that it wasn't just, you know, a very heavily male, and so I I made choices. And when I started to move out of the Star Trek world and into the other, you know, into other production companies, what did I, what was important to me Mm -hmm. when I was going to have to go to work every day and um, who was I going to work with Mm -hmm. and for? Isn't there a lovely story when you first got on set and Gene arrived and, he actually uh, acknowledged the fact that you were now in charge as a woman. Yeah, he yeah. was so. We, I was one of my first episodes um, on the bridge, and yeah. um, literally, and um, it was uh, Gene came up and he stood behind me and he was like, "Hello." So lovely to see a female driving the ship. Yeah, and literally, oh. I was like, wow, oh. this is so cool. So, um, yeah, it was really, but it was really, it was, I have to credit, it was Rick Berman and Sam Friedel who gave me the opportunity. So I had worked with Rick on MacGyver. And um, oh, yeah, was he on that? I didn't know yeah that. he was actually a production executive um, at really? that time. So before and actually after when he because he was first production executive at Paramount and then was given the opportunity because Gene's health was he need Gene needed help to move over into the Star Trek world and that's how that happened. So I was doing another show and I was doing I think Bronx Zoo at the time and. Um, right. Uh, I wanted, Sam called me and said, there is an opening. Would you like to meet? And I said, I would love to. I want to be able to park my car in place for, <laughs> and not have to go on location, right? Because on Star Trek, you, you know, we, how many, we were, what, eight days out? We're not when, going to Mars. Not, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're going far away when we go out. We're <laughs> right. on the alien planet. But exactly. I wanted, so it was a great, in my life at the time, it was a great place for me. And so I came in, I, I remember there, at that time, Rick, was that we were in a trailer and we were in the back lot and I went in. The office I, was in the trailer. Offices were in trailers on the back lot and Rick, I, I came in and Rick goes, what are you doing here? And I'm here to interview with you. And he goes, well, you already have the job. And I'm like, I do? <laughs> <laughs> that went great. <laughs> I'm like, great. This is great. And 17 years of my life later. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. wow. And you started as a? I started as a first AD. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I did that, and then and that um, was second season. Next second gen? season, right? Second season, next gen. I replaced yeah. a gentleman that was there, and um, the third year, Sam got sick, and um, they asked me if I could production manage and first AD together. And I said, "There's Oof. no way on this show." And so I said, "I'll production manage until um, Sam comes back." And Sam was never able to come back, mm. and then. And so I started producing it, and then um, I started production managing. And then when DS9 came along, um, uh, uh, David moved over to sort of supervise, and that's when I got the opportunity to start line producing. And when did Brad arrive? Brad came in on third season. It must have been third season. So I brought him in because he had worked with me on the Bronx Zoo. Oh. And um, so, and we were alternating ADs on the first, on, um, on the Bronx Zoo. And so um, that's when he came in. 
And you that know, ended up being a, a thirty-year friendship and, and collaboration. Yeah, Brad it? never had a. You know, he just was with me. It's like wherever I'm going, you're going with me. Oh, so that's I amazing. Think it was one year of our time that we weren't together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A he lovely, was, lovely man. My work husband. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was my work husband, and that's in. Apart from and, being a Red Sox fan. So, <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, on one of the shows that I just I did when um, I was I introduced the makeup department. I'm like, this is Brad. He's my work husband, and people thought we were married. Like literally, like <laughs> oh that whole God. department for an entire next, like six months. Like that. Well, they're married, you know. And like, and, and, and they, they're not very <laughs> affectionate. <laughs> they're never affectionate. We, they never see them hold hands. Literally, we. I tell the story to the same because I'm like, mm. are you? Are you kidding me? That's like how you thought that we were. So anyway, oh, it was very, wow. very funny. Yeah. Yeah, that is very funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. miss him dearly as my work husband, mm-hmm. but still talk to him. Three he's times retired a week. now, isn't he? He's retired, living yeah. in the desert, living the good but life. But he went on with you. Uh, you went on. He went on to work on Scandal with you for seven years. Worked and, on Scandal. Yeah, um, yeah we worked. Um, the uh, Cold Case uh, just worked, after our show didn't. Did he go straight to Bruckheimer with you with Cold uh, Case? Yeah. We had a year. That was it. We had a right. year of not because when I was, um, I again had replaced somebody on Cold Case halfway through the season. So, um, and then I had to have that person who was already there stay with me. And mm-hmm. then I moved, and then that person decided not to work with me anymore. And then I moved Brad into with Rob right. Rapper Brad over. So yeah, it's always. Did you ever have experience? I, I did um, a show that uh, Trotty was on. Mm-hmm. Who? David, David Trotty. Trotty. Oh, Trotty. Oh, Dave. And uh, they had gone through like 21 First ads in a single season. Oof. They what were just. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the wow. strike stipulations are. I can't mention the name of that show. <laughs> um, but you know, just bloody show I wasn't on. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things was is that you know the the, the hours were just literally impossible, um, and they just burned through them all and. Are you, as a production coordinator or a line producer, responsible for, you know, burnout of the the people that who are working for you? Well, one hopes that, um, and I think that's why we stayed. Like the, when you talk about the crew and you talk about the people who, like, I talk about the team that works with me. Um, you go into it with like, these are, you know, this is how you have to step, set up your show and you can't work a show that's working. It can't, you can't, people can't sustain eight, you know, 14, 16, 18 hours. It just can't happen. Plus the, just from a safety point of view. So it's Mm. like, I'm, you know, because I grew up on the set, you know, it's like always about what is like safety is first for me and making sure that you take care of your crew and um, and also take care of your cast, you know, just I mean, so mm-hmm. because if your crew's working, your cast is working not as many days, but there's still you can't sustain that. So, right. um, yeah, so we're responsible. And what I would have said is that like at some point in time, it is a line producer's responsibility to go to their bosses, you know, and just say, we can't we can't, can't do, do this. this anymore. Like this is not safe. And, you know, implemented now, thank God are more safety precautions mm. where you can't, you know, most studios don't allow you to work over 14 hours. Is that right? And yes. So that's new, is it? Um, it's newer. People still do it, but I won't do it. 14 like we, was an average day for most of us. Right. Wasn't it? Yeah. So, and I, the, of all the shows that I've worked of late, you know, I have to say like, we're, um, I mean, you set it up at the beginning and you set it up right with your DP and your directors. And this is what's expected. And, you know, we take now our schedules and we literally do, we sit down and we do like how, like a, a list of the day of how many hours we think each scene is going to take mm-hmm. and so if we know that it's too long you know then we'll, we'll move it over and or we have to talk to our producers about how to creatively try to you know take some of the scenes away or you know or so. traditionally the, the trek uh year was i mean it was 26 episodes 26 yeah, yeah. 24 26 I imagine. 22 I mean, it's unheard of now 18 can, i can't even can imagine, imagine. I mean, it, well but and also we did all those shows in in seven and eight days yeah when i look back yeah. and i'm like how did we do those shows and we built uh, like alien planets and we literally like we manufactured all of our you know wardrobe and we yeah. um, and you know michael westmore with like making his aliens ha- and props in it was and, unbelievable how did we do that we'd walk we'd finish on a you know let's say we'd finish a, sh- a show on a, a saturday morning at six 
and the Friday by, days. By, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <was> still Friday <laughs> in production, in production terms. Yeah. But then on Monday morning, you walk in and stage nine, there was another a, a waterfall and a jungle setting. Yeah. There'd have been yeah. a comet the week before. Yeah, it, it was, was unbelievable. But, I mean, here's the difference, though, is that we literally, we were so lucky that we were, um, we, we had our scripts ahead of time. And so we had our treatments ahead of time. So we knew what was coming down. So we knew that we, when we had like Bob Blackman and Michael and Westmore and, and you know, uh, Herman Zimmerman, that we had to go ahead. And like, so we were ahead of the game, mm. you know, by X amount of episodes so that because we had to make our blueprints and we had to go ahead mm. and plan. So, um, and, you know, you figure you had to have a new alien of the week. So who was designing yeah. that? So, right. um, so we, we really, it was very structured. And I have to say, you know, Jerry Taylor, Michael Piller, Rick Berman, Manny, anybody who came in um, to our into the group i mean you you i mean there was there was a plan it's like you know we had x amount of weeks of preparation that before the crew came in and then you had to deliver your first draft your second draft your final draft you know you had your treatment mm. and um it was very structured and then you get to the end of the season and you're shooting three episodes uh Parts of them in a day, or we yes we did. I remember mm. like part three. Yes, that must drive you. Or or batty. we double or we doubled up. There was times right. where yeah. we had we were going over, and so we had to double up days on different episodes with different actors. B roll and, yeah. and all that. Yeah, I mean, my, I remember my last days on some of the shows, and um, that we were having three different. We had an A unit, a B unit, and a C unit Jeez. shooting. You know, to to and working until like two, three, four in the morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I was surfing. <laughs> so now I say I'm too old to do that, so. <laughs> and I won't do that. <laughs> so, um, so we try to just make sure that. So most of the day, most of the shows I'm working on now, we were implementing pretty much like an 11 hour shoot day. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. manageable. Well, That's and you're terrible. still. I mean, you're doing shows that still do the 26, 24, 22, right? Like, no, because no? I'm real, I've, my, I've, my world has mostly been in streaming of mm. late. So, um, so I'm doing, uh, eight episodes, 10 episodes, seven episodes. Um, the show that I'm doing now has eight episodes, but we're 15 days on each episode. So, so you get a vacation, man. 15 days. Well, I'm, I'm on vacation now because, uh, you yeah, know, we're for the show. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I Is get that to what we're calling it? <laughs> I, so uh, you still? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, please. <laughs> I did watch um, the um, the last thing he told me, and I mean, oh yeah, I made him great. watch it. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was you were mentioning the streaming yeah. services. Oh so. my god, that was yeah, so. I, uh, fun. My mom was like, "You gotta watch the show," and I was like, "Okay, okay," because she watches Lifetime a lot. I'm like, "This better be good." <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was really so great show good. to work. Was that the one in Italy? <laughs> No. no, that's a morning show. But we were in Los uh, Angeles for that. Yeah, so uh, with blue screen. Loved that. Um, the, whole, so, the first season of morning show. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. I did second season. And they're I coming did it back, first. Are they? Yeah, they're Tonight, nice, today. They? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, today they're actually yeah, they're dropping two episodes. Today? Yeah. yeah. But the, it was the last thing you told me we actually did here in Los Angeles. Oh, we nice. did go to Austin, um, Texas to shoot for um, um two weeks and we went to um uh, San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, where her home was. Right? Yeah, 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 we went you, to. That was the cutest little adorable neighborhood. Like a little yeah. houseboat. The houseboat. Yeah. Yeah. houseboats. Yeah, so we did the exterior of the houseboat and everything on the docks up there, and we did the interior on stage. And Todd, Todd Stashwick was Yes, in Todd that. was in there. Yeah. He played the, yeah. uh, the terrible God, boss. He's in everything, he's in everything now. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know Seven why. Loves yeah, me. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. You know, there were some stories I know, you know, I mean, you took care of the actors so beautifully. And uh, there's a lovely story I know when uh, Jonathan Frakes cut his eye. Didn't you take him to the hospital in, his, in his Robin Hood outfit? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. We did. Um, you took me to the hospital. I yes, did. you took him to the hospital. I yeah. love going to Cedars. It's like, it like my second home. <laughs> I sort of like know how to do that. How to navigate Mary, it. you're back. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's been a time um, out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Who'd you bring in? But you, but I can't remember. Uh, John Billingsley's stunt guy uh, headbutted me with with the visor on. Right. And it was like, right. oh, it, and I went, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think you were like, yeah, we're going to have to go get that stitched up. So, right. uh, and Jonathan also had to get his stitched up. That's why we ended up at the hospital at the same time. So yeah. I always felt, it's like funny, if I said, if I wasn't working in television and film, I would probably go into medicine now again. Because it's like even, um, I just like, it's crazy. I don't know why, but I love it. It's like, mm. um, I was just having this conversation yesterday. Like people were saying like, I hate working with blood. I'm like, I love, I, I like the medical part of it. I like, you know, like trying to figure it out. I'm 
my daughter was in the hospital when she was 13 and literally we were there. I had, a, I stayed there 24 seven and the doctors asked me to do rounds with them in the morning did they really? because they did, because it's keeping a lot. It was, and I think part of it is like from being a producer and um, I am being so detailed or having to be so detailed mm. that I literally kept a log, a journal when I was and I tell everybody when they go in the hospital, you got to keep a log in a journal of everything that happens. All doctors who come in, who's mm-hmm. seeing you, what tests are they ordering? What medications are you taking? And, and so that's why it's like I feel like I can ask those questions, like when I'm coming with you or going with Jonathan, that kind of cut through the red tape. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And um, because so many people are not advocates or don't know how to advocate for. Right. So, um, you know, for me, it was it's like. You're so, an incredible organizer. So. I mean, uh, I'll, I mean, I'll tell this story. When my dear mom passed away in the second season, I mean, this Mary literally organized not only did she arrange to have me shot out within four days so that i could get on a plane and go home but she literally organized my mother's funeral from the offices of paramount mm. so that when i got off the plane it was all taken care of and oh my I, God. I can never thank you enough for that love really that's what we do yeah. That's our job. And that's why, you know, it's I, I think that's why it's so important for me, you know, cast, uh, crew, you know, they're our family. And um, we work so many hours and you work so closely and like that becomes your home that they, you know, that's what you do. Yeah. You know, so you just take care of people around you. And that's why for me, I have been very fortunate and blessed, you know, that when you do I talk about all the crew who has worked with me for so many years and um, the team, it's because we take care of each other, yeah. you know, yeah. and, um, and families, it family, really was friends a family, are first. Wasn't it? Yeah. It really was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there were so, there were, there were, there was a core group of them, uh, of the, of you guys that have been there in the best part of 18 years. And, uh, that was an extraordinary experience to be around that. And, um, yeah. So. Yeah. Do you hire the crew? I do. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Most of So it, it's kind of like a combination now, like before years ago, I was pretty much, you know, I, we were able to hire, um, and then just, but, you know, depending on department, if department heads, you always bring to the showrunners, you know, and, or this, uh, sometimes like the studio now actually will go ahead and they'll have to vet to make sure that, you know, everything has been. So there's certain departments that like, I can't, we, we can, we can say who we want to hire, but the studio has to give us our final approval. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of like what I try to do is that, um, um, I have been able to bring the best of the best of all my shows. And right. then there's some shows. I also look for the who is the personality that will fit the showrunners nice. and, you know, like what makes sense for this particular show. Because there's a lot of times where I'll love somebody for one thing, but they're not the proper fit for another. That's sure. good. So, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, um, and sometimes I've had to, you know, trade people out and <laughs> make, you know, make adjustments accordingly. But it's only been for the better interest of like what makes sense for the show. Mm. So Well, and that actually brings up what I mentioned to you earlier, uh, Terry Metalis, who's right here over Connor's shoulder. You hired Terry, and uh, he wanted us to know he was going to be here uh, to surprise you and thank you and give you a hug. Uh, so he sends <laughs> his love, uh, and he wishes he could be here today to see you. Uh, so he's like he's like my son. So I was like, tell the yeah, story he like he, I'm gonna cry from this. So, oh, but yeah. I hired him as RPA, and yeah. um, and literally he came from the East Coast, and he got the job in the for with us. And his mom called me and said, take care of him. He was 20 years old I'm, and um and you, you put know, him in front of Brandon and, and then <laughs> <laughs> I know shame on me <laughs> so, but, I mean, it's, but it's amazing you know he was a fan and he got hired and, and Dave Ross did the same thing Dave was a fan and got hired and um like you know it's like everybody it's like I was saying like when you look at where the people who were hired and the success that we've had, you know, with, I mean, if you look at the writing team, you look at Brandon, you look at Ron Moore, you know, you look at, I mean, it's just, it's amazing to see the, 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 um, the talent mm. that has come out of, and, and also yeah. when you, I mean, the Okudas and I mean, and people who are so, because what you want and what I is like, who is the, the passion has to come with a job because when people come to the job for me, it's like, I don't want you to consider it's like another job. Like you have to like love right. what you do. 
mm-hmm. and you have to love what you're like what you're making. And mm-hmm. so, and I um, mean, I even find this like I'm working on a show now that I worked with. Um, the showrunner came out of Shondaland, and um, and I worked with him on Scandal, and I'm working with him on this show. And his scripts are amazing, mm-hmm. and um, and the pe- so everybody who reads the scripts is like, I want to work on this show. This All is right. like unbelievable. And from actors to the crew, and that's what you want. You want people to be passionate. And not every all shows day. carry that. Not they and, just don't. No, yeah, and no. so you know, like the so the two things mm-hmm. are: are you passionate? You know, do you want to work here? Because there's a line that's out the door. Yeah, of mm-hmm. people who want to work here. You mm-hmm. know, and I we have a no asshole policy. So <laughs> right. and like truly so and yeah. like that's what like in, when I started working in Shondaland, um, we started to establish in the second season of Scandal a no asshole policy. Yeah. And you Life's have too to. Short. And that's the first thing we say, yeah. like, you have to abide by it. And if you are an asshole. Goodbye. Goodbye. And yeah. apart ways. Yeah. Do you have your hand in, because there would ever, every year there would be some new writers or some new combinations on Enterprise. Do you have a hand in in that, in the writer's room? Because there were, most of it was teams. It wasn't always yeah. teams, but mostly it was teams um, writing. I don't really. The only thing I have, I mean, like, obviously the writers are all. So in this particular case, um, there is a sole writer on this show because it's a whodunit. Mm. Um, so uh, we don't have. But other times, like in Chandelan, you had 10 or 12 writers in the room. And some were teams. Most of them were not. I have to work with all those people. So, um, you know, it's, um, I, you know, the first thing I do is I establish when I come in, like, how do I work and how do you guys work, mm-hmm. you know? And let's talk about, like, what's important in the work process so that we make sure that we're, you know, that there's synergy. And mm-hmm. um, because, you know, what I have found over the years is that sometimes it's like there's the writer's room and then there's production and then there's a line in the sand. There's no line in the sand because you're all working together and you're all trying to do, like, you. I, what for me, I have to take that script and take the words that are on that page and be able to let the actors do their job so that you deliver the best product. Because mm. you want to deliver a product that is going to, you know, be successful, and people are going to say, "I loved watching that show." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so um, so that's what you got. You have to set that up from the beginning. Is there on every show one of those moments where, like, I think we have a problem here? <laughs> there was one show that I've just finished of, of late that it was, yeah. No matter what I did, it was just it was it was a work life balance for me that was just it was mm. so over. And I can I can usually handle every any situation. Um, it was very challenging mm. for me. You know, was that, coming out of COVID. where was that the problem coming from? Actors or co <laughs> co producing or. Just. Um, I just think it was just it was um, things that were implemented before I was there that I couldn't change or yeah. adjust in accordingly. It's and, generally, and egos, that. isn't it? And um, I don't know if it was so much ego as it was just I don't know what I, mean, I still can't put my finger mm. you know, too All much right. on the so but well, still love and adore you know the people. It who is were an extraordinary there. thing, and that's what uh, studios can't can't come to peace with. That there's no there's no f- just. Uh, what is it format that you can just follow to, to make a successful piece it, it's it's and, it's lightning in a bottle and it's chemistry it's an organism whether yeah, it works very very well yeah. or doesn't work very well right and it's interesting because like i've been you know like we, it's true it's either like you you put together a team but again it comes from the top mm-hmm. you know what i mean and hopefully Hopefully you have a, the studio um, or the network that's going ahead and backing and supporting. Like mm-hmm. that's the most important. So I have been successful in the fact that all the shows that I have been, um, you know, ha- that I've been with, that we've had support and backing. Right. You know, that so um, that they've been a partner because yeah. that's the other part of the thing is that you know besides you need them as your partner. You know, whether it's you know because when you're dealing with budgets and budgets of today, which is obviously a huge issue. You know, you need them to partner so creatively they I'm understand say, what yeah. you're doing. You and the know? more they're so, populated by business graduates from, you know, Harvard and Yale uh, that with not a creative bone in their body. Or trying but, to educate them. Uh, yeah. Right. They're going to come a cropper. And as they look at AI as a way forward for, you know, the future of their, you know, share price and whatever, it's all going to bite them in the ass. In the well, end. our show had something interesting and, you know, um, Carrie McCluggage, who was such a big fan of the show, mm-hmm. Star Trek in general, you know, he was gone in, in that first yeah. season. First, uh, first couple Certainly years. First, second yeah, season. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and then yeah. it became sort of a revolving door of, of, I guess, the higher up. And yeah. you tell this story about about Don Ostroff. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, should, you should tell the one about that. <laughs> but, but, 
<laughs> you're watching, well, Don. I'll never work at UPN because it's gone. <laughs> By the way, I think I still have a UPN sweatshirt. Like, I have. I have oh, so, you do. Oh, oh, I darling, think I do. I still have the, the pleatherette the square case. and the circle. I yeah. still have the pleatherette Thomas guy they gave us. I from still UPN. do too. Oh my god! I, I said to my husband, I said I should take all this stuff that I have. I still have a storage unit filled with like Star Trek stuff because I don't know if you guys were. If, we used to be able to go into licensing. Like licensing was in the Marathon Building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had the fourth floor in every month we were able to go get um get stuff from the, there was like um a room that was um just over like an over like a swag overstaying. room like a swag room and i we used to go in and we used to literally take bags of stuff all that stuff is still in my storage oh my I, said, God. I have to go in there yeah so it's crazy i can sell it for you so, <laughs> I, 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 I might take you up my husband's like why keep all that stuff and sell it <laughs> it's funny when uh we uh, we start i think will and grace had it been in year two or something and it was a giant hit and it, the word got around that um the entire cast got boxsters porsche boxsters oh, yes. for their gifts and i i was like wow i can't wait to see what we get at yeah. the end of our first season and i think it was a duffel we got a, we got a duffel bag a duffel we got bag. a duffel bag <laughs> we got a little globe mm-hmm. i mean I, I still have it but I, the one that really got me was the the thomas guide in the pleatherette case <laughs> <laughs> i was like kidding me <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, so, so, like not you, but possibly other departments use that Thomas guy till the, to, I mean, almost like the location department constantly because I don't forget, I mean, there wasn't ways or wasn't, no, you know, right, right. so mm-hmm. everything they did was about the Thomas guide. When you were on scouting, yeah. Yeah. you took that Thomas yeah. guide yeah. and that's how you map yeah. things out. Yeah, and none of them have a, have a page 634 because that's right. Hollywood. It's always, <laughs> it's always, <laughs> yeah, and always <laughs> you always lose it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's some of us who never well, had to use, <laughs> then knew how to use the Thomas guide. Right, yeah. That's why ways helps us. are we? If you don't know your way around from Western to La Brea in this town, <laughs> take that. But like when, in terms of like the hierarchy that, at least for our show, that that changed, I don't know, uh, it seemed to be changing constantly. Um, do they come in and tell you what you're supposed to be doing with your well-oiled machine? I think um, – I don't think I, they don't. They don't. They don't because literally, I think that they realize that um, the the folks who I have been working with. I mean, thank God, you know, it's been that like it works. Don't like it, the formula works. Like you don't have to fix it. You know what I mean? It's right. like in Trek. I mean, the formula worked. You didn't have to fix it, right? So, but even though it was, but but every exec wants to make their mark, right? So, but as I move forward, um, you know, when you're again, you're working with the Shondaland folks, you're working with the Holo Sunshine folks, you're working with the Bruckheimers. People want to partner. You're, they want to become your partners. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, from the creative, they might give suggestions. You know, but they, they, but um, they, they give their notes, but they're not dictated. You know, dictated. No, they're not. They're, right. This isn't a dictate. This is a suggestion. You know, take a look at it and see if it works for you. I think we should have a boy band in mess hall, and you look that at was, them that and go. Was dual, one of, that was oh amazing. amazing. I'm not sure that's, that's, that's amazing. Sure that's I think you guys should have had a boy band in the mess hall on on your show. Right. We'll committee that, and we'll bring. We'll get back <laughs> to you. Well, the other one, you have to have pointy ears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, she's a, so, she's sort of. so much cuter without the ears. Oh my god! <laughs> Decisions that were made. It's like it's when I look back. It's yeah. It's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. the tambourine. And, 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 when yeah. the tambourine came in. Oh my god. On the song. Oh no, yeah. I never oh, noticed that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it uh, showed up. Season it by season three, I think it was. Yeah, it was they, they they upped the beat of the song because they thought it was too dour. And uh, I mean, so, nice so bring in some tambourine and some cowbell, yeah, yeah, yeah and a boy band in the mess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. All they should have done is put me in the cat suit. Yeah, there yeah. You go. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> there you go. I agree with that. Solve all the problems. <laughs> what was yeah. the difference between moving from film to digital? In terms of your That's workload, a great question. Um, actually, it was interesting. We did a lot of tests. I remember, like, because I mean, there was such a we had to make the decisions uh, financially because we had to lose whatever amount of you know dollars it was going. So they were like, if you move from film to digital, it was going to save you this much money. Um, I think. Uh, uh, when you looked at it, we, I, I so remember in the Cooper building, like we had our little room where we had dailies every single day, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, and then Peter Lauritsen had to come in and put up, we had to put up the film and we had to put up digital side by side. And you had to just, and you had, people had to, like, we, we had to go through the tests of what, you know, which was what, and people mm-hmm. couldn't tell the difference. Really. So, um, when we went digital, um, it actually saved us 
thousands, hundreds of thousands Love. of dollars. Oh, sure. yeah. And and it actually, and it was, I mean, think about it. We, it saved us time on the set, too. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, so, um, I mean, there's certain things that we had to test, if you remember, like whether against blue screen or green screen right. or whether, you know, um, something uh, uh, was going to moray. And so you still had to do all those tests ahead of time. But, um uh, and I think it was just about, I mean, the camera department, obviously. Did Marvin like it? Did he like the idea of moving from film to, to the Sony Red? Uh, what was his reaction? Um, I think he was probably fine. I mean, you know, with Marvin, one day it changed, you know. Yeah. so but it was inevitable. But And it was, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was going to happen. For us to get picked up and do, I mean, we had to do it. So. Well, I think with our show, too, given the, the nature of the, confi- we wanted it to look dark and confined, and that Sony RED camera really suited that. It picked yeah. up, uh, without a lot of lighting, you could really get detail uh, on the screen that, that maybe film missed. And, and Marvin was also very technical, too. Mm, very. So um, it really helped us to be able, so he went, for him going to Panavision at the time and for us to be able, so he did a lot, you know, he did a lot of going and testing, mm. which was really, really We'd great. We'd love to have so. him on the show. Do you have do you have any contact with him at all? Um, I was thinking about him this morning. and I'm sure we can easily find his would number. Be, yeah, would be super great. Yeah, I'd be lovely to see him. Yeah, I still speak to Billy Pete's all the time. Oh, yeah. God bless. Yeah, yeah. I saw Billy a few years ago. He was working on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah, he just uh, retired. He, did he? Did yeah, he? Yeah, he just oh. retired and they're in Arizona. Uh, so. Billy <laughs> Pete. I think that the... <laughs> he t- I, took himself and his 500 guns. <laughs> <laughs> he had a collection, he didn't he? Oh, he does sure does. <laughs> I think the show saved $100,000 an episode just on me by going digital because I could say, no, don't cut. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, I'll get this. I swear to God. I'll get it. I'll get the line. <laughs> just tell me the worst, yeah. the worst thing to hear always was like, ah, we got to reload. Oh, like, oh, oh no. no. Oh, oh, that's that's school of film. We're going to go through a session. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going like, to like, go through it twice. That's now right. Now we're going like, to do right. two takes. Just keep on those I've said it many times. He was the funniest thing at the rap party in the blooper reel. That's right. <laughs> I had goals. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, favorite place you've traveled to for work? Um, okay, so uh, to be honest with you, I have um, been able to stay uh, in Los Angeles for many, many, many of my caves. years. So Bronson is I well, because I raised because it was important for me to stay in Los Angeles and be there to raise my daughter. Oh, wow. And because my my husband and my mom's here and my family's here, I didn't want to travel for a lot of work. So why well, I um, I did work in New York. I've done work in Philadelphia. Um, and I've done, you know, going to like Austin, San Francisco, but I never took a job that I had to go ahead and be gone longer than oh, well, um, yeah, a few I did weeks. Go <clears throat> somewhere for six months. I didn't know. It was not in the cards. In I wasn't. So feature films, you were like, I mean, nah, not I, really. I was, you know, in this, what Star Trek did for me, which was amazing, oh, sure. is I, um, you know, when Rick moved over to the Cooper building and I was pregnant and um, I got, I was able to take his office, which had the bathroom. So, and I was able, like, my daughter was eight weeks old and she would be able to come to work with me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I always said that I was, I wanted to be, and Brad and I as work partners said that Brad had kids and I had kids and so my daughter and so I would it allowed us so he went home X amount of days and that was the other thing that we did is we said to all the you know to crew members especially who had family if you had some place to go that your kid was in recital or playing sports you had to go for a couple of hours because your kids will always remember that you know and you'll then you the girls so I I sort of I practice what I preach you Mm. know so um I so I always said it was important for me to be able to go home and put my daughter to like leave work, go home, put my daughter to bed, and then I would come back to work. And there were so many nights that I did that. And so I didn't want to travel. And so, you know, going to New York for X amount of time, and I was was offered to do a pilot in Boston, and I did go— um, to scout it and do the whole thing. And then I realized when they said how long I was going to have to be gone and that they said, you can travel back every weekend. I'm like six hours on a plane to be there for it. I'm like, can't yeah. do it. And my daughter at that time was like, you know, she's, it was at an age where I needed to be there for her. So, um, Great so yeah. And yeah. even today I have to say, I like being home in my own bed at night. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know? So, um, so I've, yeah, so I've been able it's to. It's underrated. <laughs> it, it was really underrated. And it's, uh, yeah. So, um, how many hours did you work then uh, a day average on, uh, say, Enterprise? Um, you seem to be always there. Yeah, it would come in the morning. So, um, you know, usually got there six or seven o'clock in the morning and we'd work until what, you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. It was, I mean, they were long hours. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, because I always like to open the set. I would usually open the set and then Brad and I would 
um, take turns closing the set, mm-hmm. you know? So, and I've really established that all the way through from that point on, um, all the way to all the rest of my shows where, you know, the people who were working with me on the production team, you know, that we would alternate. Mm-hmm. And on this particular show um, that I'm doing now, like I'm there from beginning to end, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, especially as the strike started to come into play mm-hmm. and um, having to manage all of that. So I remember uh, speaking of you uh, sort of opening the set in the day. We, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't stand on ceremony very often, but there was one time where I did, and that was when we had the swamp. We had Padma Lakshmi oh, yeah. uh, on the episode, oh. <laughs> and we'd set up this swamp on a Friday and never got to it, so it just sweltered until Monday. Mm. And we got there, and the scene I was supposed to do is I was supposed to jump and go underwater, and that I was like, "I'm not doing I'm that. I'm not doing that." <laughs> 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 no, but God bless my stunt guy. I forget his name. He was like, "I'll do it," and I was like, I, that, okay. "That's a fantastic <laughs> idea." Yeah, we never tested that time. It was like now we would test the water, as we would do all that. We would change right. it over the weekend. Uh, didn't even happen. Didn't oh think no! About that. Uh, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's it smelled like crazy. sewer, and so, I was like, "I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, no." I'm not going to get an allergic reaction. To Mary, take me to the hospital. Yeah, exactly. We're not doing that. They didn't clean the water out, did they? What did they no, do? no, no. Well, we had to shoot it. It was our day, yeah. and uh, uh, Sean, his name was. Is uh, who second. was my st- my stunt guy? Uh, he did it. Wow. He did. Yeah, he did it for, for ready money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, no, but we had to get that done because we had to get rid of that set to build another but, alien yeah. planet. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it, stage it, it sixteen. Did, stage sixteen. Stage sixteen. <laughs> so oh, I know uh, you took a couple of chotskis uh, that Jimmy Mees gave you. Uh, was it the marionettes? Do you know what I'm talking about from uh, an episode of Next Generation? They take them home with me. Yeah, as, as a now, as, a, as a gift. What, what were they? <laughs> um, they were from uh, that episode, the most toys, and uh, uh, Kivas and the other character was named after Lolita Facho. Kivas oh, wow. Facho, and uh, do you know? Do you remember these marionettes? No, I don't. I I'm going to have somewhere. to look at my storage unit to see if they're there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because I always said it's just... I don't remember. God bless Jimmy Mees. He gave yeah. me a couple of really beautiful crystals from uh, one of the sets they dressed. Now you still have it. And I still yeah. have They adore yeah. my sitting room and have done for 20 right. years. Yeah. yeah. God bless Jimmy. He passed away. Yeah. He did. A while he ago, did, didn't he? he? Yeah, yeah, he passed away of cancer. And hmm. Yeah, right. he was, but he was also, I mean, he's lived um, because he was another story when you talk about, you know, helping somebody, he had an aneurysm. Um, that, That's um, right. Yes, and was uh, uh, right in front of stage eight and nine in the bathroom and um, and got, I mean, literally wasn't supposed to live and he lived and yeah. God bless him. And yeah. uh, had a scar on his head. Yeah. He yeah. was a beautiful, beautiful oh, man. He was one great. Of faves, really, one of my faves. One of my faves, like truly. But, like, yeah, yeah to, when you talk about like, a great human. Yes. He is a yeah. wonderful human being. I remember that you uh, had, because coming out of the shuttle pod itself, it really wasn't built for human oh, beings God. to go in and out. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> it really what wasn't. What episode that this show is named after? <laughs> yeah, it was. I swear to God. I mean, I had bruises all over my oh, head. Well, there was a chiropractor <laughs> who was right near the, the, the lot that you. You suggested. You, yeah. you suggested yes, that Scott on, went to. and. Yeah. I went to, did you go to him at all? He yeah. was on Melrose. Yeah. And yeah. then he moved from Melrose on to, in fact, I just went to, like, probably like three or four years ago, went back to him. Like, He's a masochist. Him down. He was An absolute hard. masochist. <laughs> that man. He was hard. Uh, yeah. 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 He's yeah. like, you're a little tight there. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, my bones, yeah, now my bones are broken. Oh, my <laughs> God. I mean, he was, I wasn't oh, sure man. if he was a, a healer or a, just a very <laughs> cruel or human. A murderer. <laughs> or a murderer. He just didn't like you. Oh, God. Uh, he watched the show. <laughs> breathe into it. I can't breathe into it. I can't even breathe uh, right now. I can't, oh, boy. I'm barely crawling. <laughs> exactly. To you. I can't get into the van to get me <laughs> exactly. to Exactly. <you. laughs> Did it help? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, he was really good because, like, you know, wherever you were were tight in your in your back, he would just get in there. And by the time you left, you felt pretty good. But it was the hour that you were in there. You were literally. <laughs> just absolute <laughs> the struggle misery. Was the struggle was real. I had a really scary chiropractor once. So it was terrifying. I get it. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't believe him anymore. <laughs> no, I tell a lie. I see one a week. Um, <laughs> I don't you you see this <laughs> <laughs> He just changed his name. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the bird. Like, okay, <laughs> I went to him forever, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I think Paul Thess needs a pee. Um, <laughs> and then about you guys. Uh, 
Um, you know, looking at Terry Metalis's rise in the business and um, seeing how he came from being a PA to being what he is now, are there others that uh, over the time in Star Trek or in your career that have, have made similar leaps? Well, I think Terry watching his path has been pretty remarkable for mm -hmm. me. Um, I'll start with just Terry, just in, um, you know, being a, uh, coming in and being a fan, uh, hiring him as a PA and just watching his growth. And, um, and so that's been great. The, what the other people who actually, I look at, um, Dave Rossi, um, mm -hmm. who Dave. came in, Dave, Dave was also, again, you know, came in and we, what happened was there was a, there is a program at Paramount, um, that's actually there. It's a page program. And so what I tried to do, um, is usually hire pages that, that come out of the page program, hire people come out of the page program that are ready to move and hire them as PAs mm. because normally they have some sort of, um, of bat, you know, they, they have a back uh, an understanding of what it takes actually to be a PA or what the needs are. And also because they've sort of worked in a little bit of a studio environment. Um, so I hired Dave and Dave actually was a huge fan of, um, Trek. Um, and he also was a friend, I think at the time, maybe of Eric Stilwell's and, mm, um, right. and so that's how Dave came as a PA. And then, um, uh, I hired him as my assistant and then Dave moved from being my assistant, um, to Rick Berman's assistant. Rick always stole Rick my stole assistant. Your assistants. So <laughs> Rick always like, stole yeah, my assistant. We train, well, we train them and right. then, then, and Dave, then Rick would go ahead and I'm, uh, I need a new assistant. And I'm like, uh, okay. And, like how, and how can I say and no? And then they'd be right. brutalized yeah. you know, I mean, first of all, later. it was, it was, I mean, it was, it was the next, it, it was for me, it's, it's like train and move on. Right. I mean, the same way that I was, you know, mentored, it's like, you want to mentor and move on. And so it was, it was, it always broke my heart because I love and adore. And I still, to this day, am like, I keep, you know, in contact with all those, these folks. So Dave moved on to work with Rick and then he is now working in still a Paramount and working for the Paramount Parks and has, is very successful that way. Meryl Davis is the next, uh, so Meryl worked with me as my assistant and then moved to work with Rick. And then now she's working with Ron Moore and um, she's running the company in development and, you know, a success. And so, and, and she's really Outlander is, you know, her baby. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, and I, I have to say just like all the writers, like there wasn't a lot of people who really came from the production. I mean, there, there, there people came from production and have moved on to be successful, but I mean, look at the writers, you know, and you think about like all this, you know, who came in like Brandon Braga was a baby writer, you know? Yeah. So with Ron, um, and you Ron look Moore, at yeah, Renee Echeverria, Ken, yeah. you know, Ken Biller, um, you, know, you look at all these folks who were just amazing, you know, and they really were, because I think like Trek was a teaching ground, you know what I mean? Where did and that nurturing come from? What such, was the, um, what? I think it came just that, you know, Rick, Jerry, Michael, like that's what like, they were when you talk about being showrunners and you talk about, um, you know, uh, uh, showing the, the folks how to be, how to, how to train to be a good writer and to be mm. a showrunner. They did that. Mm. You know, you look at, um, you know, we successful coming out of, we called it the DIT program. It was a director in training mm -hmm. and you had to go through a year mm. of, um, you know, so that you, um, start from prep, you know, you go for, from prep uh, of the show, then you go through production and you follow yeah. it through post into editorial yeah. and you look at Jonathan Frakes. You well, look I did at, it and then unfortunately, Unfortunately, we didn't by the time the relationship. Right. Yeah, they wouldn't let us. Jonathan, Roxanne Dawson. Yeah. Um, Robbie. 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 And yeah. um, I mean, it's like their careers have taken off, you yeah. know, as yeah. all producer directors and remarkable talent. Right. You know, so. Right. Yeah. I mean, Roxanne sort of cut her teeth. On our yeah, show, she did. you know, she, and look what she's doing with Foundation, Foundation right, now. right now. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Is she I love running that? that show. So she's she's uh, she's over there. Yeah, oh. she's. In fact, I think they brought her. She was in the middle of one of the shows, and I think, um, yeah. So I think she just finished it. So. Mm. Um, but she was, well, I, it was her birthday and, yes, um, was. yesterday, yesterday. Yes, you know, nine 11. And then, um, yeah. but I, uh, I had contacted her. I can't remember. And I would think, I think she might have, even on my, on my birthday and she just said, I'm now back. Um, you know, um, so, um, she had just come back from Europe because, because of the strike. Oh, so right. yeah, so right, she'll right, be going right. back. But I remember like her in her, her early days of directing, I, we were doing a scene and, and, uh, she said, uh, Connor, I need you to go over there. And I was like, why? 
<laughs> and she goes, because it's in my story. It's in my story book. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you need me to go get a bag of nuts. <laughs> exactly. And she was like, yes, exactly. exactly. Go get a bag so of nuts. It's in my story Yeah, she's like, it's right here. So this funny. is why. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going over there. <laughs> you but can't. I, that's not in my storyboard. <laughs> I do have to say, I mean, it's so interesting for me to look back and say, I mean, when you look at like the three different shows, right? Because I mean, I it's funny, I, I always look at our three shows. I don't really ever look at DS9 because I wasn't ever involved in that show. And right. I could oh. consider that like the black hole. But right. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> they were far away. So oh, they Mary. were far away. They were across the stage and they didn't talk to us. So other than that, yeah. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we, we, oh my God. we were the ginger I think we, we, were, we, were, we were the favorite child. <laughs> So, um, so, uh, but you look at like the camaraderie, you know, of each of the, of the cast, you know, and like how wonderful that is, you know, it's like, and, and still to this day, how many years later I look at the next generation and all that they're all, they're still buddies. You yeah. know I mean? They're still all great friends. They still see each other all the time and they still laugh at each other. You know, they still make jokes and make fun of each other mm, and right. it's just wonderful, you know, and the same thing for I mean, except for a couple of the cast members. I mean, really you think about like, I my spoke, my saw Robbie last week. He was like, I'm still talking to this one and this one. And I see this one. They said to say hello. And yeah. it's like, you know, just it stays dear to my heart and it doesn't feel like it's 20 some odd years ago. No. You know, it just feels like no. it was yesterday. It does. You know, when you, so, when you sort of drop back in and see the people that you worked with all right. that, all those many years ago, it does. It just sort of feels like, hey, good to see you again. Yeah. You know, that the time hasn't passed. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, because of the conventional world, that all the the shows we all we all now know each other as a family yeah we really do yeah you know i'm just as friendly with armin as i am with garrett or you know jonathan or lavar and it's really it's yeah. a beautiful thing it's great yeah. it really is not you so much i know <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 this is a yeah, professional. professional relationship <laughs> we're here by contract always was always will be <laughs> we never speak <laughs> 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 yeah, I always tell that because Garrett, it's it's funny. I, I mean, we go back and we talk about like the things because I was like the detective who always had to find everybody. Because, yes. Yeah, uh, they were needed missing. some finding. Oh, God. So, you know, so, you know Garrett. I was a walk in the park, Mary, Garrett, really, wasn't were. I? There was, so, you know, Garrett, uh, where he wasn't supposed to be and, you know, saying, uh, you need to get back here. You're supposed to be here two years, you know, two yeah. hours ago. And, yeah. There's well, a flight from where? There's Vegas. a flight from Vegas. <laughs> so, if, and, you know, and if you can't catch that flight, you better catch a car. You That's right. You better get car service and be here soon. So, have them drive fast. Oh, my God. But, like just things like that, you know, Michael Dorning in Florida, like somewhere. And I'm like, would why, he be flying why, somewhere? He'd be flying in like, why? But you didn't tell me, you yeah. didn't clear it. It's not on my master calendar, God you know, damn. like fly back here. Yeah, yeah. You are not allowed to go unless you let me know. So like mom says, they just so. cats that can talk, aren't they? <laughs> oh man, it was just quite. But I mean, I remember, you know, if you gave <laughs> enough, cats that can talk. if you gave enough time to request something, that's good. We always have always. a master calendar. Yeah. It was just, well, they, but you're being there, you know, when people were being bad boys or bad right. girls or, you know. Did you ever, <laughs> right. I mean, not to, you know, so. call them, but did, did you ever have people up to your office and just read them the goddamn riot act? I never, well, I, I'm not that personality. So, mm -hmm. but um, I was firm. Yeah. And um, I mean, one thing that we laugh about today and we still laugh about is that, you know, Brad Yacobian, who was my work partner for so many years, Brad, if on Fridays, he always, if he wore his jeans and he wore his leather shoes, mm -hmm. you were going to get fired. So you better be careful. So if you got called up to the office and literally, really? I can't tell you. He so, wore sneakers always, didn't he? He, oh, well, Jesus he wore sneakers, yeah, but, but if he was wearing, if he was wearing his leather shoes you and so. So a lot of times because we had what was the, 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 what was the, that? there was That's because it leather if you wear your leather shoes and you came into the office it means you're getting fired so so it was it like was his official so look. it was the official look that right. he had to be you know so there was many so our hair department was sort of our rotating hair department on a lot of the on a lot of the series mm -hmm. and you know Rick had a thing about hair it was and, nicknamed the, the show oh was nicknamed hair trend. Trend. and so literally <laughs> like you would go like I be Mary I be called and I'm like what come into you know so I'm looking at dailies and then literally 
literally at that time you had like the knob and Rick would take the knob and he'd go back and forth. And he goes, look, that hair is out of place. Yeah. And oh. then we'd have to call up, you know, so, and then, I mean, it was like, it was literally like the only department that it was the rotating department was our hair department so much of the time. But every time somebody got fired, then somebody would win an Emmy. I go, your you heard. Yeah, right. It was literally, it was. <laughs> they literally, your hair had sort of, you know, B, one, two, three, you know, and they knew which bit were frosted and which weren't. And, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was, two, it, it, it was paint by number. <laughs> it was paint. Yeah. It was really, it was crazy. I sometimes walk into the, into the hair and makeup trailer and he literally would be just in, in foil, half in foil, half being glowed. <laughs> <laughs> Reading a Cosmopolitan <laughs> magazine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. It's hard so, work being beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but it was good times. And, and and we learned we all learned a lot. I mean, like for me, it's like in my job, it was because no day was the same. Yeah. You know? And right. uh it was they were very fun days, weren't they? they were Alcyon fun days. days, salad yeah. days. And you had a you know, you had a twenty year career there. We just did only four. <laughs> yeah. Were you a fan? I was not a fan. I didn't even know. Like I, w- I was not a sci-fi person. I became a fan. Yeah. But I think part of it again was going back for that. You know, I wanted to be in a place where I could park my car and just be there. And so I'm like, oh my god, this is like a great job. And then all of a sudden, then I became, you know, a fan. And so, then that uh, that studio, I mean, and those so, sets. And I know you, you on the la- on Sir Patrick's last day. Uh, doing his close up, and you, re- I think you reminded him that this is where Cecil B. DeMille uh, told, uh, I want to say Gloria Swanson, but it wasn't. Uh, who was it? Was it? Who was it? I'm ready for my close up. Um, ready for my close up. That was Gloria Swanson. Yeah. It was Gloria Swanson, yeah. yeah. I mean, On to, stage 18, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this to this day, it's because I'm across, as I said, across the street. So my window literally faced into Paramount. So I see the fountain, I see the sign, mm. um, you know, st- going to stage four. So literally, like, that was our row. I mean, it yeah, was Star yeah. Trek row for, you know, 17 years. Yeah. And then NCIS, I think, took it over. So. And well, then, it's possible and, and, actually went in there a bit after, possibly, right after we went. Yeah. yeah, community then went in there. I know that. Right, they were great. Eight, nine, sixteen. Yeah, yeah. eighteen across the street. Yeah, such yeah, a beautiful great. lot. Beautiful lot. It's really. Yeah. It was. And we were there in the last sort of you know really the real the days heyday. of that studio. Yeah, yeah. No, God bless. And I snuck back. I've just I've told this a couple of times lately. I went to see the Mission Impossible movie just now at that theatre. And uh, with my girlfriend, and we managed to snip it. I, I, I said, follow me. And there were security people everywhere. And we went all the way to the end, past the theatre, and then up the side of the building. And there was no one there. And I was like, oh, we're in. And so I got good. my phone out. <laughs> Every time there was on a phone, and Sarah, be my assistant. And I was like, no, no, we really we, we, we can't do it. And people were kind of looking. I was like, fire no. everybody. So, Come on, man. <laughs> and we got back there. And it was just, it was such a lovely thing to go back to. Stand Tarantino, yeah. that hack, I'll call him back. <laughs> no kidding. I was literally kind of doing it, playing it up. Yeah. But to stand there and uh, and stand in front of 18, 8, and 9. So many again. memories. And yeah. so, like, yeah. so, I mean, I did it uh, after I was able to do do Shondaland had a show called For the People and we were over on st- the Paramount lot again and just like coming back through and it's like this is your life and really the security guards were the same and you know the people who ran the departments and even to this day there's still some folks who are there and when I go when I'm able to go onto the lot I'll like walk out you know I'll go to, to knock on their doors and it's just so it's like oh my god with open arms you know yeah. just the memories mm-hmm. for so many not only for the crew who worked on the show but mm-hmm. you know the security guards and the people yeah. who worked in the grip departments and all of Steve those and, yeah, yeah steven so it was amazing it really was i mean just to drive through those gates and have those guys at, at the, the the uh the paramount you know security gates know who you know were, who you were know your name good morning darling yeah like, yeah. yeah and then when you're when your job's over yeah. It's like, can I see the ID? Yeah. Can I see the ID? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What? <laughs> There's nothing in my trunk. I swear. Oh, they, uh, it's all in the overcoat. <laughs> yeah. They look under your car. They oh, look in your yeah. trunk. They look in your backseat. They did. Yeah. yeah. Still never, Should we uh, still do some never fan found questions? <laughs> oh, oh, don't say that. <laughs> what? Still never found the chair. Oh, yeah, right. He's joking that I'm he joking. stole the chair. <laughs> No, I watch, just the second I watch one. TV every night in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is everyone ready for some fan questions? We're ready. Yay. Okay. 
Are you ready? That's what's most important. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. Maybe. All right. um, Nancy Congdon. Hi, Nancy from Patreon asks, what is the biggest challenge you faced during your time with the Trek shows? Good question. I think it was just uh, the financial, you know, just keeping everything um, uh, in scope, uh, in scale, and on budget on time. They weren't mm. cheap, were they? No. They it, it, well, it's show. interesting when I look back and I look at the numbers of what we, you know, it was like $3 million or whatever it is, and now I look and I'm like, oh, my God. You so, make, yeah, really. But um, mm. for what we did for yeah. that kind of price. Yeah, so, amazing. But it's really, yeah, it was about keeping everything in on schedule on time. I mean, CGI so, back then was a Fortune. Oh, uh, well, our, think about our post our post production yeah. department and our oh, visual effects department. Yeah. It yeah. was massive, and we were like really the first. That we were like we were like you know innovators in it. Yeah. Right. Rob Legato, Academy yeah. Award winning, came from. Yeah. Us. All right. Next question. Not least Connor's paycheck. <laughs> I mean, I know well, yeah. that was a sizable chunk of every week. <laughs> <It> really was. <laughs> All right. Um, Karen Downey from Patreon asks, uh, what was it like to be the producer of an interactive VHS board game when compared to the regular TV shows? Also, not really a question, but I have to hear about the Cupid Hospital trip. Has to be one of the more surreal Star Trek stories. Jonathan Frakes. Uh, <laughs> he was playing Cupid, Robin Hood. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so, okay, so the interactive board game. Yeah. Um, um, what was it like to be the producer of an interactive VHS board game when compared to the regular TV shows? Okay, so I'm going to tell you that my brain is blank. <laughs> I've produced I so much. I don't remember, 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 remember. An inter what it's interesting is I remember <laughs> the company for an interactive board game, but I can't remember actually producing it. Oh, okay. So I apologize for that. It's okay. um, it must have been a great memory. <laughs> Some more stories. Fantastic experience. Um, very difficult. But, <laughs> I don't have anything negative about it. Yeah. Um, and I guess what well, the difference is obviously uh, it's it probably was on a smaller scale. Right. You know, so yeah. a much smaller scale. And um, uh, uh, and going to look at going going to the hospital with Jonathan as with Connor. I mean, in know, tights, in tights <laughs> is always. A, you know, did he take a bow and arrow with him? I, I think I left that behind. It probably was sitting in the van, so because we had the driver who took us, and we just I probably walked into the emergency room just like like nothing happened. You know, I, I can't remember at the time. Paramount has a hospital, and so we might have had the hospital call Cedars at the time. I yeah, they have their studio hospital that was yeah. actually on our. So it's right it was up the street there. On the right corner. up the street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. It's where six and seven and four are. It's like it's a little. So it's it's a uh, top it was, gun shot there. Yeah, oh. yeah. We yeah. so so we might have had them call ahead because mm. in those days you had the back. You had the back. In fact, funny enough, you talk about um, when I was cleaning this week and I had my Rolodex and I was looking at the numbers that I still had. Part one of them was from Cedar's emergency room back lot, so I probably had the number, right. and so we probably got taken in right away. But Jonathan, you know, I mean, he's just he's just he, his his funniness never stops, right? <laughs> and he's so great, we man. probably just had we probably just giggled the entire time. Yeah. And um, the most important thing is that, you know, that his eye, because he also, again, got hit up here. And then we had to go ahead and have stitches, but we had to make sure that we, you know, possibly had to have the plastic surgeon there because, you know, I, he, obviously his face was really important. So we sure, just had yeah. to make sure that he was covered. Not so, so much anymore, but so, back then. Not, <laughs> not so much. But then, Holy I mean, shit. You know, his, his, <laughs> his livelihood was his face. That's right. So as it is, well, so. It's a and, tough and, and VHS is a... Uh, for those of you who are younger than... Oh, yeah. What well, is VHS? The, a VHS <laughs> is that... Like, exactly. It was a thing you put into a machine that looked like a big cassette tape, and it would play a movie. Mm. On a magnetic mm. tape. On a magnetic tape. Mm. I think I still have some of those, too. Do you? I do. Yeah. I mean, I just threw away all the... Some uh, of my finest it's work. It's so funny. funny like, but, yeah, I, I think I still have a cabin of still all the VHSs oh, from funny. that I used to get from Trek. Really? But, yeah. I yeah. just cleaned out uh, my garage and I found some three quarter inch tape, which I don't yeah. even know what yeah. you would do with what that do you do now. With that today? I, yeah, I mean it's it's got some like early commercials I did, and I was like, I, I guess we burn it because there's. Or you, you can even, take them. So there are places. Are there that transfer places. Will transfer we can still. It. Yeah, we'll yeah, digitize yeah, yeah. it. Mm. The, yeah. For your vanity. Yes. <laughs> look at him. Oh, look at him. <laughs> we'll just play your old commercials on a loop here in the studio. <laughs> right, the, yeah. Whatever, recording a show. <laughs> it's good because I don't talk in them. <laughs> I miss rewinding videotapes. 
I miss rewinding them. That was that was relaxing. You'd finish watching a movie. Oh, you were kind. And then you'd rewind it. Rewind. And you right. got a be moment kind, to like digest what you just experienced. Is that a blockbuster yeah. thing? Be kind, rewind. Be kind, rewind. Yeah. 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 I still think I still have that rewinder that you're able to right. buy. So oh, it's like crazy. It like, that's what I'm saying. Like I have so much. My husband goes, there is so much stuff in our garage and in our storage unit that we need to go through. And I'm like, <laughs> when it gets cooler. Still right. <laughs> <laughs> and blockbuster was a store. I'm not the only <laughs> one. Blockbuster. Yeah. Honestly, I've got crap in my garage. Star Trek crap. I know, I'm telling you. So yeah. you can go on eBay, I'll help yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Sell it. I did get rid of all the scripts. They're all gone. Oh, wow. They've all I gone s- to good homes. Yeah. Did you keep the pilot and the last I've one? Kept, I have. I've okay, got the good. original pilot yeah, that that's doesn't important. even have the logo on it. Right. Both episodes, right. all signed. I kept the last episode, These Are the Voyages, and I kept Shuttlepod one. Wow. I yeah. can't sell a single one of them. He can't. No. <laughs> I've seen them. They're in. He couldn't sell hot water tubs, bottles to yeah. the Eskimos. This one. That's God right. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, I can't. We'll be at a table together at a convention, and Dom will bring in five, and I'll have five. And by the end of the weekend, his his are oh, gone. And I, I got I, my lunchtime on the first day. I've actually ended up selling some of his. Yeah, can you uh, help I was going to say you should take his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for right. I had for a cut. I give him a cut. <laughs> Dave Rossi used to take my headshot to the conventions and sell them for ten dollars. He really? He did. Oh my God. Yes, and like I, I gave him all the money. <laughs> Literally. So no, my husband no, reminded no. me of that this week. I'm like, oh my God, I totally forgot about uh, that. Yeah. Oh my God, is that funny? But they, like Dave was able to go like a place like Australia. I mean, he went all over the world. Doing oh it. yeah, it was there was crazy. a time. There was a time. It was when, when it was every weekend. Huge. Yep. Huge. Yeah. Huge. I think I think Marina did every weekend. I think she she, she yeah. was a she was the queen. She was a, she was and, yeah. uh, of conventions. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. And then the prince came along. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Another question. All right. Uh, Laura Mendez from Facebook asks. Who was the most difficult person to work with in the Trek world, and who was the easiest? Do you know, I'm just going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be here for this one, do I? Um, difficult as far as for cast, do you mean? Do you they left it open-ended. So <laughs> difficult um, person to work with in the Trek world. I got 20 bucks on this. Um, I think it depends. There was a couple directors mm-hmm. that were challenging. Um but they got straightened out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the crew, I don't know say limp turn on one leg. <laughs> because the crew would just walk outside until, until they got um, cast. It wasn't. It wasn't that they that people were really challenging. They there was people who had challenges mm. that we had to help. Mm-hmm. And so and um, so that was that was the most challenging part of that. How do you? help people who needed help, um, but were, and get them to be willing to get help. Mm. So, yeah. That's, that well is the answered. hardest part. <laughs> uh, we were the only easiest? cast. Mm. Sorry. We were the only cast who didn't lose a cast member. You. Truth. We lost you. Well, mm. that was written in. Yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't lose Connor. You no, lost, we still have Connor. Still have Connor. Yeah. But you had. Did everyone did, else? Everybody uh, else in our main everyone? cast yeah. made it through. and Well, made it through. No, made it through. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a yeah. couple of, you know, have to go home to their doors at their house and knock on their doors to make sure they were okay. But, right. you know, um, yeah. but that's, but yes. I, I think, I mean, as I said, I mean, it wasn't the most, some of it wasn't the most challenging. It was the challenges that they had right. that could help them through. Yeah. So it's difficult production. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're dealing with, not the, the logistics, uh, but also creatives and, you know. And actors. Right. Well, so, I also I mean, have to say, too, when, you know, was coming in us. so much for the actors, too, depending on the, the age of the actor, depending on, you know, what they have done prior to yeah. that. I mean, when you come into the truck world, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of eyes on you. And um, especially, you know, it's like, and there's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. And some people can manage it and some people can't. It you is know? a step up and moment. I it's, mean, a, it's a, you know, it it's, really yeah. Is. And I mean, to the thing in, you know, doing just publicity and marketing and, yeah. and just the grueling hours, you know, I mean, yeah. it's like if you were, if you had to go in and you had to do prosthetic makeup, you know, yes. prior to, you, know, you were there two or three, four hours, you were there four o'clock in the morning yeah. sometimes I, for an eight o'clock call and you know you're there 16 18 you know hours i mean that can just it grinds on I know. you and I you're mean, doing Renee, that who was a seasoned actor yeah. god bless him uh just found it grueling it was crazy yeah i mean we had actually i mean there's some t- we actually had one actor um and i think it was on voyager that came in and 
uh, it was a Friday, <laughs> going into Friday, oh, and so uh, was in a prosthetic, mm-hmm. uh, pro- got into a prosthetic and couldn't handle it. And mm-hmm. literally, um, they they were calling for him on set. The ADs couldn't find him, and like, where is he? And he literally had torn his makeup off and ran, got into a car, and and I remember Brad calling me and goes, "We've lost the actor." I'm like, oh, "What do you mean you've oh, lost wow. an actor?" You know. Yeah. And we had to track him down, well, and he the- and he went. I mean, he literally went. The anxiety of it went. You know, was that he, on our show? Was that was, was that that was that, was that, was, that was that was that I had a scene with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. It might have been on um, Voyager as well, but he played a Vulcan, and it was late at night, and uh, we you, you know we rehearsed for twitching. lights. We rehearsed for lights, and he was he wasn't great with his lines, and I was like, that, "That's okay." And uh, he left. And never came back. They and and they the found ears. one of the ears, the ears in a dumpster. In the dumpster. In the trash can. Yeah. On the way through Godfather yeah. Alley. Yeah. 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 And, and so those are the kind of, so those are the challenges that we had to endure. Yeah. Like right. Those, those kind of things. I mean, it's so it's crazy. And particularly so. when you go as a guest star onto a, an established show, you know, and our, God bless Scott was amazing. Was amazing. He set a tone yes. that was so welcoming. Uh, you know, I, I think that young, that man had some mental, some, some, some so mental, mental issues health issues and, going yeah, on. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So we're there was a, a lot crazy. of challenges that way. And how do you deal with it? But it's at a lot that of time. bloody pressure. A lot of pressure. We, you know, and we, I think we didn't really um, figure everything out until Monday morning. We just, by no. the time that, so yeah, it was kind of very yeah. scary. Oh well, yeah, it'd been, re- mean, been re- recast by Monday. Not to make I light think. of it, but the other ear that, that they did, that, I think they found the ear in the dumpster. <laughs> Mike Demerit had stuck it up on the pin board in the second oh, DE office. Yes, I'm oh, sure. I swear sure. to God, I wish I'd pinched that. That oh, fucking yeah. ear would be worth a fortune now. <laughs> but I, re- I, I heard they the same. They sat there for, th- for two years, that pinned well, up on that pin board. And they went after him for the second ear. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. But I think that we probably did because, I, um, you know, I think that we probably did because yeah. that ear, because you could take that and sell it mm-hmm. and, and it was yeah. out into the world and, you know, so like yeah. so many, you know, when we got, you know, there was lots of times when we, we, Jonathan tells us actually, Jonathan and Patrick just did something, um, at the Geffen or not the Geffen at, um, uh, the Annenberg, mm-hmm. um, uh, that it was actually, it was, a uh, a night of Patrick Stewart and Jonathan actually oh, moderated it. It was actually kind of, it was really interesting. And Jonathan tells a story, which I completely had forgotten during next generation that we had somebody come and steal the chair, but actually had gone into our wardrobe department. I'm sorry, it's fans. I'll just tell you this yeah, one okay. story and then we'll go. Um, and, um, anyway, we had all this stuff stolen and, um, I literally had to go with the FBI on a, a oh reco- on a recognizance mission where we had to like stole, st- 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 like stolen and recovered merchandise we would go to the valley in Northridge and we literally had a stakeout and we caught the person and then had to get and, oh and, I, and so and Jonathan tells a story I'm like oh my god I forgot about that <laughs> <laughs> anyway I'm sorry about that I'm <laughs> totally sidelined this is amazing sorry. so <laughs> three o'clock you're having coffee and donuts in the car yeah in a van we were in a van <laughs> really? literally with a van with monitors really and we have headsets as we were as they were pulling up yeah so that we were going to make a trade between a car and, and merchandise and that's oh how we got God. him. We yeah. got eyes on him. Got, got eyes, eyes on him. him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> uh, Thomas Holen, Walnuts84, from Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> from Patreon. Where did they come up with that? I don't know. <laughs> Walnuts84. Likes walnuts. Um, any tricks of the trade or good lessons learned that our Shuttle Pod Show producer can learn? <laughs> be nice to the actors Sti- stifled <laughs> laughter in the background <laughs> be firm with Dominic oh, as a producer um, I just think um, be honest be communicative um, uh, you know come in, in in a professional manner get the show done and um, but enjoy while you're doing it there right you know. so enjoy everybody has a, everybody has a job to do right and your job is to come in know your lines Say your lines, you know, um, uh, be Don't respectful. Don't knock over the furniture. Be, mm. be respectful of each other, you know, and uh, work as a team. Mm. We talk yeah. about we talk so, about making sure we're having fun a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever it gets a little too worky. Right. I need to remember to have fun. <laughs> having fun is important. Smiling. Laughing. Mm. Yeah. Laughing. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> okay, great. Last question here. Copy801 from Instagram 
asks, if you could change one thing on one episode, what would it be? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> um, or maybe not. I know yeah. what the fans That's, are asking. Oh, they're they're asking you to say, uh, can you please unkill Trip? Ah, I think uh, I guess that's my guess <laughs> about what's really being Mary. No, can you unkill Trip? <laughs> you don't have the power. No, I wish I did. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> Not coming back. <laughs> don't read the book. Oh, that's awesome. You never know. It could be a flashback episode. Exactly. <laughs> Just see me in the shower. Exactly. <laughs> In the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby from <laughs> Dallas. Didn't Bobby from Dallas wake up in the shower? And he was like, oh, it was all a dream. Oh, yeah. Mm. We can move on to some Star Trek trivia. All right. How are you at trivia with Star Trek? Oh, God. We'll see. Oh, great. Uh, uh, probably not very good. So it's us three so against him. He's the okay. Oracle. Okay. Um, I feel like Dominic's going to know the most. He does. Oh, he takes I'm, it very seriously. I'm, he does. I'm, I'm very competitive. I, I'm, I'm really competitive too, but I have a feeling. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, uh, I mean, I've been, I watch, I've been, I've got to watch a bit more Trek. I've got because since we've not been interviewing actors, I haven't been looking at episodes like I was doing. But now I'm, I'm going to go back and start. Uh, yeah. All right. Really? Those are two That's of the it. best episodes yeah. of right. television. I'm look at those tonight. Ever. So should you. Oh, shall. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, uh, sorry, was, uh, next TNG. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> He's good looking there, isn't he? Just, just Google it. Just Google, it. <laughs> Google does a lot for you. Yeah, it <laughs> does. It does. Awesome. Never gets old. They shot those cuffs on the bottom. <laughs> right. <laughs> just read that. Yes. <laughs> All right, it's time to play some Star Trek trivia. So mm. it's you three against producer Mark. And um, today, uh, Mary, Dominic, and Connor are playing from Patreon member MB. MB. I'm still flashing Hi, MB. green, Nina. It'll go off. Uh, right. And uh, I am playing for our brand newest, shiniest member, uh, who as of this moment in time is Jim Moore. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Thank you, Hello, Jim. Jim. God bless newest, you, mate. Member. And yeah, so let's get started. Okay. Right. Uh, there's uh, four multiple choice answers. Question number one. In Star Trek Voyager, Seska posed as a Bajoran member of the Maquis. What species did she reveal herself as when she joined the Kazon? Oh, my God. God. Uh, I still don't remember the names. Don't remember. A, Breen. B, Cardassian. C, Human. D, Klingon. I got Green. You did? So who did you say? What you said? Cisco? No. Seska. 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 I don't even know who that is. I do. Uh, <laughs> and posed as, and she was a, she was a what now? She posed as a Bajoran she, what, what, member what, what, of the Maquis. What alien was she? Was uh, she was she, wasn't was really? she an alien or was, was she a human? Does who was Seska? Yeah. Mark, who is Seska? He's not going to give it away. I'm not saying it. I mean, say, <laughs> so either a Cardassian, a human. A what now? Yeah, so she, what What species did she reveal herself as when she joined the Kazon? Yeah. A, Breen, B, Cardassian, C, Human, D, Klingon. Well, the thing is, are there Cardassians? On, was it Voyager or DS9? Voyager. 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 I think it might be. I think it might be Breen, too. Breen doesn't sound familiar to me. No. Doesn't? No. So not Breen. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think Cardassian. Human? Human no, or the wimpy, or Klingon? Human doesn't feel right either. No, fine, feel right. Should we go with Klingon? Klingon? We're going Klingon. Mark, 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 mark. Cardassian. Oh, yeah. damn. <laughs> All right, one zip. <clears throat> Question number... What, what was Sesco? She, she was a member of the Maquis. Uh, she was uh, she was a spy, a Cardassian spy who got stuck in the Delta Quadrant with uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Maquis ship that Jane Way and, and the Voyager were chasing when they uh, got thrown. I got to look at more Voyager. I still I still have a resentment factor. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> behind you. Let it go. That's right. Let it go. That's right. They made, they made it home. They made it home. Right. Yeah. Like we'll, we'll, we'll last more than four seasons. <laughs> question number two is another Voyager question. Here we go. <laughs> question number two. In Star Trek Voyager, whose life did Seven of Nine save with Borg nanoprobes? A, Janeway, B, Chakotay, C, Torres, or D, Neelix? Mark, 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 mark. Shit. I didn't press the button. 
Oh, we got it again. Look yeah, at you. Just, uh, um, save someone's life with nanoprobes. Yeah. I hope it was Janeway. And we think it's either Janeway. Say the other ones again. Chakotay. Yep. Uh, C, Torres. Or D, Neelix. Neelix. Um, well, Neelix was... No, I doubt it. I think it feels like it would be Janeway because it's like that. Why? that's the most... Yeah, I right. think Janeway. Mark. Mother. Mark. What? Mark. Uh, <gasps> ne Neelix. What? Yes. Oh. And he got really angry about it. He's like, because of you, there's not an afterlife, and I know it, and you took that from me. How dare you take the great tree of life from me? You sound just like him. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> and now that I look at you in the right light. Yeah. <laughs> do I look at you? <laughs> How do you spots. have all that in your mind? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, this, it's... Not here. It's uh, It all becomes one big episode. I, it does. <laughs> yeah, one right. One big episode. Yeah. <laughs> all That's right, amazing. two zip. I'm not liking this. Okay, I'm going to be quiet okay. now because I've steered you wrong the no. entire time. Uh, <laughs> I've seriously got to sit down and watch Voyager. I'm going to beat your ass one day, I'll tell and you. Voyager, folks, I love you dearly. Just don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> All right, question number three. In the Next Generation episode, Cupid, which member of Robin Hood's followers does LaForge become? A, Will Scarlet. B, Alan Adele. C, Friar Tuck. Or D, Little John. Oh, we got it again. So, who becomes who? Uh, <laughs> this is their strategy. Uh, yeah. Le Levar. In the Next Generation Forge. episode, Cupid, yeah. which member of Robin Hood's followers does LaForge become? And? We oh. have to go with the one that doesn't like seem that it like, should be, right? Like Little John? It, yeah. you, want to, you want to hear them? Give me a, the four. A, Will Scarlet, B, Alan Adele, C, Friar Tuck, or D, Little John? Well, Friar Tucker, Tuck Little John's. Yeah, I don't think it's what was the first one. You don't think it's it's uh, Will Scarlet? No, too young to. If I mean the, too, the too most easy. famous member of that story would be uh, Friar Tuck or Little John. Exactly. Let's go, let's go, let's go with Little John. Let's go. Yeah, let's go with Little John. John. It feels like little yeah, there's two on the news. Oh, mother of invention! Don't say Friar well, Tuck. I think Friar. I think Friar Tuck was Data. And I don't know who the other two names are, so I'm going to guess A. Will Scarlet? Can we get another go? So it's not Will Scarlet. I think it's uh, <laughs> the other John. one. <laughs> Little John. Oh, oh my God. God. Uh, B. <laughs> oh, yeah. we, have, we have an extra question. So um, Who was it? Alan Adele. Alan Adele. I never knew that he was part of. Story Law. <laughs> <laughs> Is he even in it? Alan Adele? No. Uh, I don't know. Okay. He was the manager. I'm a Star Trek fan, not a Robin Hood fan. A Dale. <laughs> yeah. A Dale. A Dale? A no. Dale. Oh. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> that makes all the difference. Okay. Uh, so all right. Well, it's not, uh, two, not much two nothing. Two, okay. two zip. Okay. okay. Let's go again. Question number four. What is Jake Sisko doing when he first appears in the Deep Space Mark, Nine Mark, pilot? Mark, Mark, Mark. So don't, 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 don't interrupt. I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Question number four. What is Jake Sisko doing when he first appears in the Deep Space Nine pilot Emissary? A, playing baseball. B, climbing a tree. C, fishing. Or D, writing. Shit. I think it's B. I think it's I think baseball. Well. In the, in the pilot. In the pilot of DS9. Yeah. Which I have watched. And yes. they're in the black hole. I, I'm pretty damn sure it's fishing. He does fish with um, Ciroc. I, this Jake Sisko's the son, right? Yes. Is Jake Sisko, that's, it's, it's Ciroc. Mm -hmm. I think it's fishing. I think it's fishing. Yes! Nice. <laughs> it was the first and only time Ciroc ever went fishing. That's <laughs> what I told you. It's real, this. It's just a game. It's yeah. just a game, but it's real. <laughs> it's a real game. All okay. right, two, one. Let's go for it. Yeah. Question number five. In Deep Space Nine, what was Damar's vice? A mark, 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 mark. Damar. Yes. Damar? Damar's vice. Vice. Yes. Question number five. In Deep Space Nine, what was Damar's vice? Yeah. A, he drank too much. B, he talked too much. C, he gambled. Or D, he ate too much. We got it again. You're good. Yeah, you are. Uh, I, don't uh, even, I don't even remember who the hell Damar is. Who was Damar? Damar. I know. I, 
Huh? I know. Who lost these things tonight? Damar. Uh, 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 I would say. Damar was a recurring uh, character. I, I, I don't I think it, it was talked too much. Did he gamble too much? Because you could gamble there on. Uh, or he drank too much at Quark's Bar. Who oh, was like Do you remember bar. who Damar was? No idea. I'm trying to think who the hell he was. He was a recurring character. What what alien was he an alien? You're asking a lot of questions. Uh, oh, <laughs> no one's going to answer it. <laughs> uh, it's either it's either ga- was it, it's not uh, drinking, talking, gambling. It feels uh, like drinking, drinking or talking, gambling, gambling, gambling yeah. in that eating world. Too much. Eating oh too much. <sighs> it's a then he wouldn't shit. be able to fit into a spacesuit. That's I mean, true. Look at him. Look at that face. Look at that poker face. I I think I um, poker face. it would be <laughs> since we don't know much about it. I think it would be. Gambling. I don't think they go with drinking. It's too obvious. That's isn't a, it? I think it would be gambling. Let's go with gambling. Mark, 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 Mark. Drinking. Oh. And for a bonus point, I can tell you what he was drinking. He was drinking Canar. Oh my God. Which is basically a <laughs> boozy, canar? boozy, thick fish oil. It's really gross looking. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> Yum. He was, uh, no, he was a Cardassian and it was played by um, uh, uh, Rat Pack. Uh, Jeff? No. Uh, Rap. Uh, 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 other the he, he worked with uh, Mark Lamo all the time. Um, uh, I for, uh, shoot, I forget his name. K- uh, um, Casey. Casey. Casey Bix. Oh, oh wow! Oh. Oh, I like yeah. Casey Bix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A drinker. <clears throat> his character was a drinker. All right. So <laughs> just to be clear on that, <laughs> Mark's won so, this, uh, year, this, yes. this uh, episode. Yeah. Sorry uh, for who were we playing for? Apologize to MB for MB. losing. Sorry, sorry, MB. We tried really hard. We did. We they were going to win you a car. Uh, and Jim Moore, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop watching more. Uh, all right. So fun trivia. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to. We turn on the box so that it wouldn't break. Oh, look at that. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. When you want to hold that. Isn't that something? Thank you. Look at that. Wow. This is from. Uh, a lovely chap. Is it what's his name? Andrew? Uh, Andrew voice. Kaplan. Thank you, so Andrew. So yeah, beautiful. thank you, Andrew. It's uh, nice to see you in Vegas. Yeah, and in Philly. And in uh, Philly. Yeah. Where we saw your stall. And uh, for the fans who want to get these, because um, he makes them. Oh, we'll uh, we'll put it up on the uh, on the video in the in the caption in the comments below. Very good. But isn't that beautiful? Uh, and then we got this guy. <laughs> and this guy. Thank you. Uh, I never know what these things are. Um, well, we have a black magic cloud pod. I know, I fancy one of those. (laughs) That is amazing. That That will, uh, let, uh, anyone who works in post-production on our show, uh, access the, the data. Uh, from what we shoot. From Uh, uh, from Karen. That's so cool. So we don't have to shuttle drives around anymore. Oh, great. Or we can minimize how many shuttles we drive. I'll nod like I know what you say. <laughs> yeah, I go soft focus whenever this comes yeah. up. <laughs> that's that's going to take like four steps out of our out of our workflow. So it's it's really exciting to have. Very it. good yeah. from Karen L Kendrick. Thank you, Karen, darling. Very sweet of you. Is there a is there a person connected? Uh, yeah, to this that one? one is Karen as well. Oh, yeah, Karen as well. Uh, Karen, um, a portable SSD T7. Yeah, Mary. it's uh, <laughs> it's one, I it's one of those. It's, those, are, of those. <laughs> those are two terabyte drives, and she got us one oh, for she each got of us, the cameras that we yeah. use, that's so, so that we can like record five in directly here. onto the drives instead of on the cards. Because when we record on the cards, it overheats the cameras, which is why we have to take breaks. Awesome, wow. thank you, Karen. Also, yes. those drives we can plug into that new thing, which will allow our editors and our post audio and our post everybody guys and gals. That's great, Yay, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Uh, and to anybody uh, who wants to support the show in a, in a specific way, uh, you can go to our wish list on Amazon.com. You can join us on Patreon. Uh, there in the description below, there is a, a link to our bio page, which gives all kinds of different ways that you can help the show, the things that we need, we want help with, uh, ways for you to participate in the show. We're trying to make this a, a family effort. So I'm a size 11. Much. <laughs> I'm a size 11. It doesn't seem to do anything, but I'm a, I'm a size 11. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're going to sort of try and set up some sort of uh, thing on our website, aren't we, for sustaining membership? Yep. Uh, um, we're going to, yes. We're, so Patreon is awesome for us, but um, a lot of the money that is uh, donated through Patreon 
uh, goes to taken in, in fees. Yeah. Uh, uh, somewhere between thirty and forty percent goes away in fees. So we're gonna uh, we've built out a membership portal on our website, and that'll launch soon. Yeah. And uh, sooner than later, you'll be able to come and do everything that we do on Patreon on our website. If if you'd like to stay on Patreon, that's great. We we're grateful to have you. If you want to come over to our website, uh, more of the money uh, we'll only lose about two percent of the revenue instead of thirty to forty. We'll like yeah. you. We'll like you better. <laughs> yeah, we'll like you a lot. We'll just like you better. And uh, <laughs> you know, as I've said many, many times, please think about sustaining, uh, becoming a sustaining member. We really need your help. Um, you know, we've come a long way in, the, oh, in, a, in a year. God knows we've we come a long way. And uh, but if you want to see this show carry on and just go stratospheric, please help us out. Yeah. Anyway, without further ado, I think it's time for stuck on an island with Connor Trenier. Yes, yes, Yay. yes. So you're on a deserted island, comma, with Connor Trenier as the host. So what the deal is, is you are on a deserted island for the rest of your life. You're not uncomfortable. Uh, you are given the works of Shakespeare and a religious text of your choice if you want one. And then your favorite author, their complete work, your favorite cuisine, like if it's Italian food, you get all Italian food. Your dessert, again, like if you want ice cream, you get all flavors of ice cream. It's a strange island. Uh, and then it's your musician slash composer, their complete work as well. And there's a, a bonus item, um, which I'll tell you about when we get to that. <laughs> uh, so your author. Oh, God. <laughs> the rest of your life. I don't know if there's just one. Well, you only get I know. This is really, this is, I know you're killing me. Sorry. Um, get the New Yorker every week. <laughs> the New Yorker would be good. I, I hate I, your game. I don't like my yeah. game. I don't like the game. <laughs> should, are you a reader? You are a reader. I am a reader, but I'm not as much of a reader as I should be because my schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so really, I read a lot of different people. You know what I mean? And a lot of just um, like. So I don't have one author. I can't answer you. you well, no, you can't. You have to. You're not. We, we can. We can come back to it. Let's go. Well, let's warm you. up to it. You'll email. I'll me. email you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll give me like five. <laughs> uh, you musician. There are no points for this, uh, by the way. Joni Mitchell. Oh, Joni yeah. Mitchell. You're the nice. first Joni, You're the first Joni Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, your cuisine. Do you have uh, a favorite Joni Mitchell song? I'm sorry, we can't. Oh. Move past uh, that. No, I don't. Why? No, they're all on the freeway. So. Oh, Coyote. You. Coyote, yeah, that's a beautiful song. Do you know, funny enough, I just, you know, I don't scroll much, but she's just come up a couple of times. Well, uh, could you just, yeah, her um, concert's hurt that she just, but also, yeah, so Johnny Mitchell. Okay. And I have a couple of others I can add. Uh, cuisine. Cuisine would be sushi. Oh, okay. excellent. You're yeah. Japanese. You can have Japanese, you know, in, in general. Healthy. Uh, yeah. So, so similar follow-up. What is your favorite? What is your favorite sushi? Do you have a favorite, um, like a go-to, the one you get every time? Sushi, a restaurant, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or or a, or a fish. Uh, I like uh, um, I like to do like yellowtail sashimi. Mm -hmm. I like to do halibut sashimi. Mm -hmm. Usually sashimi's are our go-to thing. Salmon skin salad, it's always oh. good. Mm -hmm. um, black cod miso, mm -hmm. it's oh, always good. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Garmi and I and Lotus Root. And yes. Let's come. Let's finish up. <laughs> no, we, have we have lunch to go to now. Dessert. Dessert. Um, dessert for me would be ice cream. To get all. Yes, yeah, so all the ice cream. Yeah. Um, uh, your author. <laughs> God, you're killing me. <laughs> I can't. I can't think of one particular. In all honesty. All right, you can have Shakespeare. I'll go Shakespeare. You already have Shakespeare. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, and your bonus, your bonus item, right? We covered everything else. Didn't yeah, we? I believe we have. Um, your bonus item can range from. Well, I'll tell you, the, the I think the funniest one for me was when Jimmy Darren chose a uh, Ferrari <laughs> <laughs> on the yeah. island. Yeah, what did you do? He didn't necessarily drive want to it. drive. He just wanted to sit. Um, sit in it. <laughs> my bonus item would be. I'm sorry, it can't get you off the island. No, it's okay. Okay, but can I bring? Can uh, um. A yoga mat, or um, mm, or uh, yeah, do or you, um, you practice. You practice quite a bit. I do like to do yoga, but I love to do be involved with sound baths. Mm. 
With Those what? are cool. Sound oh, baths. Where they gong. Oh, oh. The gong. They gong oh, you. Oh, yeah. They lay on the ground. They gong you yeah. and everyone else. And they, yes. Yeah. Oh, a sound bath. Takes away I love my those. anxiety and stress. Yeah. Interesting. So that would be my... That'd be my go-to. That would actually know, keep is, me. Is that a place you go to? or um, I do go to a place that has sound baths in right. West LA, but right. there's Santa Monica, but they're all, they're they're wonderful to go to. They really help my stress level. Are they level. flotation? Or, no, 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 no. You lay in a mat you and lay on the ground, literally yeah. there's gongs and they, oh, they go ahead. People and they, walk around yeah. and they, sort of good energy you. Yeah. yeah, but it's all, so it's very holistic, um, but it actually takes my levels down to... Normal. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> when I'm stressed, I do. That's, like, that's my go-to. What yeah. sort of sounds do they use to do that? Um, I think it just depends on who the person is who's doing the, right. um, because it's bowls. Yeah. And, um, you can put and it on then, YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah we just got a bowl and I've been practicing it. Have uh, you? Yeah, I'm getting pretty good at it's it. It's really, it's, yeah. it's, I love it. And the sounds, I just, because they're, they're very healing and they're very, like, just soothing, so... Mm. No like cowbell. It. You'll like it. No, no cowbell. cowbell. No drum. Cowbell's less <laughs> soothing. No, I, yeah. It's like <laughs> my my stress needs to come down. No <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, gosh, it's been fantastic. You guys, it has been so much fun. Thank yeah. you guys for including yeah, Truly. Yeah. Like when I got the text and the phone call, I was like, oh my God, this is great. I'm so Aww. excited. Yeah, so it's, just to be able to see you guys. And yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, right. Time. So truly, it's joyous. It was my blessing. So, oh, thank, thank you, thank you. So. Love to Meryl, and uh, we never really thank talked you. about that. I mean, uh, do you get to go out to dinner every night? Uh, no, Mary's can't. husband is a food so, critic. Yeah. Um, oh, how cool how is that? Exciting. Believe it or not, I mean, like Meryl, because he has to go to all these like crazy places now because you know he has a radio show that's actually syndicated, but um, most of his work is like in um, like Pasadena, South Bay, San Gabriel Valley. Um, places like that. So, and he usually does like two or three or four restaurants because a lot of it's like, sm he likes to do um, like the smaller places, you mm -hmm. know, that are more like ethnic. So, or the dives that like are really, so um, he'll go out usually for like a, a day or two. And I don't, you know, I, because of my schedule, um, I don't go with him you because he never knows where he's going mm -hmm. or he never knows what's good. Um, there are places actually that like through social media that, I've, that we've been finding that like if there's some place like that we want to make a destination, then we'll go. Right. Right. But, um, and he watches what he eats too. So, um, you know, so we just have to, so a lot of times he'll do like, he'll bring stuff home or he'll set the bar or what have you. Yeah. So, it must he's be great. difficult as a food critic. So. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he's, he used to eat a lot on everybody's plate and now he's um, eating his own plate. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, but he's good. He's, thank you for asking. Yeah. He's, he's great. He's well, in fact, he's doing. And we love free food. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That's not a joke. That's that's uh, not a, that's, no, 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 no. And we love not food. Joking. I mean, like we are. No, we're huge foodies. And so when right. Sarah comes home or we go to visit her, we literally like it's all about like like the, the reservations are made thirty days in advance. Really? You know? Oh yeah. So it's crazy. Like everything Super. is everything surrounded about uh, around food. Wow. Right. So what's his? Uh, yeah. What's the? Uh, where can people hear him? Um, I think it's called CRN, is uh, it? I'll have good. to, yeah, text uh, you. Um, and so, in fact, he was doing his show today, and he was actually working. He was uh, interviewing a pickle guy today. Uh, oh, yeah. So, oh, cool. pickle yeah, guy. I like pickle, pickle. guy. So, like it's pickle. A so all about pickles. I wow. like a pickle bowl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it's a game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's all the rage right well, now. Well, again, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Like, truly, it was a blast. Thank you. It was yeah. so much fun. Yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you, everybody. Here we go. Thank you for watching. We got excited. <laughs> we have this Cabernet oh. from you for you uh, from Alamitos Vineyards. Yes. Um, Sean and Chris. Alamitos Vineyards in San Jose. In oh. San Jose. Oh, wow. Alamitos Vineyards in San Jose. So thank what you, Sean and Chris, for this. Thank you. And what a beautiful label, too. Yeah, it wow, is. this is amazing. Uh, yeah, those wow. uh, the, their labels are painted by their family members, their yeah. mother or their uncle, depending oh, on whomever. Oh, I love this whomever. family. Yeah. Okay, we'll be looking you up. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. So, yeah, they make love a nice, local. Uh, yeah, they're, it's they're, great. They're just harvesting now, and uh, yeah, that anyway. That yeah, I've drunk a couple of bottles lately. That's great. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon.